Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, the 30th day of December, 2013. And this year is not long in the tooth. The teeth of this year are falling out, and this year has a very long white beard. Soon, the new year will come in. And I talked a lot in the last few weeks, especially yesterday on the Sunday transmission, about what a critical year 2014 is. And I want to settle down a little bit today because I was pretty wound up yesterday. I didn't get to everything I wanted to cover. I wanted to try to settle down a little bit and really go over with the listeners why I think 2014 is such a critical year and also get your take on that. And the callers were just so good. Uh, yesterday, because we don't screen calls. We get some great calls. We get some callers that sound like they've been drinking a gallon of cough syrup. Uh, they're calling us with two tin cans and a string. Uh, but we have great listeners, uh, bottom line. And just the callers yesterday really got me thinking and made so many great points. What do you think the biggest story, not the biggest media story, not all the fake hype stories, the fluff stories, the distraction stories, you know, the Dallas Cowboys losing to the Eagles or whatever, the big issue here is what are the real stories of 2013? And I think the, the larger awakening and the implosion of the confidence in the, the system, I think undoubtedly that is the overarching big story of 2013. That, that the awakening, not just here, but worldwide is on. And then the Snowden revelations and NSA and... Uh, all the tyranny coming out and, and, and Benghazi gate and IRS gate and harassment of the media and persecution of the Tea Party. It all rolls into that. Uh, one of the biggest stories, of course, is the fact they tried to expand the open war against Syria. Public said we're backing Al Qaeda against people that didn't attack anybody. This is outrageous. So that's a huge story. But I want your take on what you really think overall is the most important stories of 2013. 2013 has also been the year where the establishment openly circled the wagons and said, look, we're just going to outright lie to the public now. We're going to engage in even more psychological warfare, race baiting, sexual baiting, uh, every form of balkanization you can imagine. The media has gone completely, openly, nakedly weaponized in 2013. And then let's look forward, though, because it's a double, double deal. I want to know what you think about 2013. And then any other issues you want to mention after you give us your take on that. And then what's what's coming in 2014? And do you agree with myself and countless others like Rand Paul, Ron Paul, Matt Drudge, uh, Joseph Farah, uh, basically everybody we talk to or everybody we read, everybody who's been accurate in the past, has their ear to the ground, knows what's going on, says this is such a critical year, not just with the midterm elections, trying to repeal some of what Obama's done and then, and then actually bring him to justice. But, but geopolitically, uh, with Russia moving missiles up to their western borders, uh, with the West, with Western Europe, I mean, just all of this is such a big deal. And we're going to be breaking all that down after I hit some of the news coming up in the next segment. I'm going to open the phones up, not now, but in about 10 minutes I'll give the number out so that we can get your take on all this. There's a lot of news, obviously, that I haven't gotten to yet because we're four minutes uh, into transmission, but uh, the bombings in Russia follow Saudi threat to attack Russia. And again, this could be a false flag. Russia has engaged in what looks like false flags before when Putin was uh, running for his first election from vice president to president. There were some events, but this, this follows direct Saudi threats to lose Russia tens of billions of dollars trying to discredit them and and not let them have the international spotlight during the Winter Olympics coming up. And so my gut and, and all the different angles here and the way this is happening is this is meant to destabilize Russia, make Putin look weak, and it looks like the CIA with Saudi Arabia activated their Al-Qaeda forces. Of December 2013. And obviously we have masses of incredibly important news, but I want to open the phones up right out of the gates to ask you, what do you think the most important, not the biggest fluff stories, but what were the most important stories of 2013? I believe it is the huge awakening that is now accelerating. And then all the big breaking stories and developments come out of that awakening. The public woke up and the military led the way speaking out. 
and literally told Obama, no, we will not attack Syria with aircraft, and no, the special forces will not train al-Qaeda in bases in Iraq, in Jordan, and in Turkey. That is, that is huge. That, that Dempsey, who was a lapdog of the establishment, went to Obama at the White House on a Friday night. They were going to hit him on Saturday and said, the military is not with us. We cannot do this. The whole world is really upset about what's happening. And the French were the only ones freaking out, running around saying, attack, attack, attack. What does that tell you? Well, the French are set to get part of the pipelines. They're going to come out of there with the natural gas and the oil. The French want America to fund Al-Qaeda to take over that area. And our country is finally having that moment of conscience where we look at something and just say, is there nothing we won't go along with? Is there nothing we won't do just by saying we're the good guys? So it's okay when the country's been hijacked, is being captained, by the most anti-human, anti-liberty combines, nameless, faceless corporate boards who can all rationalize what they're doing and insulate themselves from the decision that their minions are carrying out. Well, we're going to name those nameless, faceless globalists and point out their power structure. Because when the Federal Reserve is known to be private and known to be owned by less than 20 families, predominantly out of Europe and England, when it's known that the country's being run by foreign combines, when it's known they're gearing up for war domestically against the people and that it's treason, when it's known that what they're doing is the author of our discontent, when it's known that they are the plague culturally, when it's known the globalists want us poor and dumbed down so they can run our lives, when it's known that there's a shadow government. People didn't know, believe there was a shadow government just three years ago. The majority of media would make fun of me. Now, when the LA Times or the New York Times or the Washington Post is interviewing me, they say, well, why are you against the shadow government? Why are you against a corporate world government? Oh, I thought it didn't exist, bozos. But see, we are winning the info war. So now you can't deny stuff exists to your readers. You've got to admit it, but say, oh, we're rabble rousers. We're extremists because we don't like the global system. Oh, what are you against? Peace and harmony in a, in a world system that brings us together? This is not a world system to bring us together. This is a globalist ring of power a centralized technological world government that scientifically targets humanity in a giant experiment, a social experiment of deconstruction, of leveling competition for a genetic corporate rewrite of the entire skin of the planet, not just Homo sapien sapien. Homo sapien extinctus, I think would be a good name for it, or the Homo sapiens are dead. The homo sapiens are gone because a bunch of unhappy, nihilistic globalists who have unlimited sex, power, uh, private jets, everything. Hundreds of trillions of dollars and euros that they've stolen and created their own alternate fraudulent stock market system. A bubble meant to absorb the rest of the world and impoverish the world while only empowering a select few. And then blaming free market capitalism for your abomination that is a fraudulent computer code hacking the very nature of reality and turning the public into a bunch of drooling screen time zombies. That's what we're talking about in 2013, the fight against that, the awakening to that. Listen, they deny FEMA camps, the Emergency Centers Establishment Act, the Civilian Inmate Labor Camp Program, they have to deny stuff that's public because if they ever admit it, then there is a debate about it and they can't win that debate. That's why they say there's no drones in the skies. There's no billions of bullets. There's no checkpoints on the highway. It's not tyranny to have kids being trained to spy on their parents. It's not tyranny to arrest kids that play with Nerf guns in their backyard. It's not tyranny that if a kid has a gun sewed on their sweater that they, you know, the TSA doesn't let them fly. Or if a kid's wearing an NRA shirt, doesn't even have an image of a gun on it, they're kicked out of school. It's not tyranny. 
No, you're right. It's not tyranny. It's crazy town tyranny. And they are just running around like zombies with their heads cut off. Wanting us to buy into their whole fraudulent system. Wanting us to buy into their lies. And it's not happening anymore. If we get the word out that this society is falling, this society is imploding, and point out that it is being scientifically orchestrated in the establishment's own words, it's game over. And I know I've said that many times in different ways, but I want people to really get that through their melons. The establishment wouldn't be trying to censor Real Talk Radio. The establishment wouldn't be trying to shut down free speech and wouldn't be trying to tell us resistance is futile if resistance was futile. The truth is there's always been a very tiny group that loves liberty and a very tiny group that loves darkness. And most people are just lackadaisical and kind of followers and want to be told what to do. But the minority that burns with liberty, burns with the animating contest, burns with visions of humanity empowered to the greatest level. Those of us that burn with admiration for the beautiful and the intelligent and the successful and the pure and the virtuous, those that do not have the envy or the jealousy or the hatred of the good, we are a large minority compared to the tiny minority of those that absolutely serve evil. And look at globalism. Look at the 10 kingdoms under FEMA in the United States. And then globally, 10 regions under the UN and UNESCO and the OECD, which is the real global corporation that runs everything, that was set up after World War II. OECD, Organization of Economic Cooperative Development. They create the plan in their board. It is then voted on. And if there's any disputes, they meet at groups like Bilderberg and Trilateral Commission to, for fine tuning. This is all on record. They all write books admitting it, bragging how they run everything. Hoping you don't go read it, though. It's only for their own minions to be able to read it. When Carol Quigley wrote his 1,100-page Tragedy and Hope in the early 1960s, there was only to be 1,000 of them copied for academia, and it was to be given to the CIA, the State Department, but also to other heads of state around the world. But the plates got out. And a few copies got bought, and pieces of it got republished in magazines, and lawsuits were threatened uh, by the publisher, but it was fair use. And so the word got out on Tragedy and Hope. And then later, just by sheer brinksmanship, patriot groups have republished it. We sell it. And my point in bringing that up is, he says in the book, we have to have an operation manual because this is so sophisticated, our own people have to understand it. How we control left, how we control right, how we want the illusion of choice, how we're going to destroy markets, destroy freedom, impoverish people, create a technocracy. Brzezinski's written five books on the same subject, admitting it all. How the U.S. government funded Pol Pot to kill 31% of their population. All you've got to do is have the courage to realize we've been hijacked and have the courage to tell others. Because here's the deal, the courage is only on the surface. And by that, a lot of people think to fight this is dangerous. If you actually knew and have actually studied this, if you're a new listener, the danger is in going along with this and literally losing your independence, your individualism, your soul. And that's what the globalist traffic in is the souls of men, as the Bible says. That's what they're really after. They want our souls. They want to know who we are so they can program us and change us. That's the ultimate control freak vision. And if, once you realize that, it is not courage to fight this. If men were coming to kill my family and were coming to kill me, it would not be courage that I would fight them with every bit of vicious cunning that I possess. That is not courage. That is survival. If you corner a raccoon in your garage and try to kill it, it's going to attack you viciously, biting and snapping like a PCP-driven machine. And not because it has courage. It wants to live. 800-259-9231. I want to hear what you think the biggest stories of 2013 are and what's coming up in 2014. Do you agree with me? It's a critical year. 800. Let's come back with a number. You have the Volgrad bombings.
following Saudi Arabian threat to attack Russia to destabilize the country and discredit the Olympics. And now there have been uh, other bombings uh, inside uh, Russia, not just uh, the bombing in Volgrad. And these are reportedly by Black Widow uh, female suicide bombers connected to the Western-run Al-Qaeda. And this is an open secret outside of the United States, just as Al-Qaeda has been used uh, against the uh, uh, more stable uh, pro-West, pro-liberty groups uh, in Libya uh, and in places like Egypt. And you're like, wow, pro-West in Libya? Yes, very pro-West in the last 10 years. Uh, for about seven years before they killed Gaddafi, seven and a half years, he was investing in the West, letting everybody in from Halliburton to you name it, building hotels everywhere and apologizing for everything and uh, allowing investment. And I mean, look, we're doing business with Vietnam right now. We lost 58,000 people and uh, 200 plus thousand seriously wounded. And Gaddafi probably wasn't even behind the, the Lockerbie bombing. That was a double false flag, but that's another story. The point here is, is we know Egypt was an ally and was not uh, persecuting Christians and other large minority groups uh, in Egypt. Now they are. And then it got so out of control, 16 million people marched. Muslim Brotherhood took over with a million person march. 16 million marched and they had street battles and defeated them. And so the Muslim Brotherhood started blowing up facilities all over uh, Egypt and attacking military bases. So the military crushed them. And I'm not romanticizing the Egyptian military, but I'll take them over Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda any day. And, and again, the CIA, large elements of it, let's be clear, a lot of folks in the CIA are going public saying they don't like this, have created Al-Qaeda, protected Al-Qaeda, and fostered it because British intelligence in 1903 made a deal with a Bedouin leader who controlled a small area of what is Saudi Arabia today, a couple hundred square miles, and they gave them weapons and they took over what is Saudi Arabia today. And they took over um, other countries like Syria that they had no claim on. And by 1933 dominated more than half the Middle East. So, in fact, it was more than half, um, probably 80% or so. The point is, is that this is the type of garbage that we see going on and People are like, well, wait, are you saying there aren't Muslim extremists? No, I'm saying there's a giant pool of crazies in Saudi Arabia. And they go and have set up base camps funded by the CIA on record all over southern Russia and all over Europe and all over the United States. And the globalists give one order, one phone call, one message to Saudi Arabia intelligence Bandar Bush, as he's known, Prince Bandar, Sultan Bandar, who's set to probably end up being the leader of the country down the road. He's the head of intelligence now. And they activate one cell that gives the orders. And ladies and gentlemen, Al-Qaeda sleeper cells all over the Western world will engage in havoc that makes 9-11 look like a blessing, as horrible as it was. And the system will then use those attacks to fully have martial law and shut down the free press and go after all the opposition to the structure. And it won't matter if we're like, hey, the government's behind this. Shut up, traitor. Al-Qaeda just killed you know 200,000 people. Dirty bombs, planes flying into buildings, trains being blown up. I don't want to get into what you can do, but, well, it's well known by these groups. So I'll just say it. You go up the top of a high-rise building and you dump toxic chemicals into the ventilation shafts. You kill everybody. I mean... Let me tell you, a five-man team trained right in each city could kill 10,000 people like that. 10,000 people. Okay, so the point is, and that's a conservative number. And I'm telling you, that's the New World Order's secret weapon is they run Al-Qaeda, these offshore banks that run our country. And in 2014, we better be ready for their false flags because they're, they are hitting Russia right now. Another 30 dead. We're going to break that down after phone calls coming up and then a lot of news on Obamacare, the stock market, the mega bubbles, all of it coming up. Media spotlight shifting to positive Obamacare stories. Rabble rousers won't get attention. And that's being announced uh, all over uh, the news. The Washington Post and Politico uh, have been reporting uh, that um, the media is going to follow orders from the White House 
and, and become openly state run. They've been state run for a while and only report on positive stuff. And anyone who doesn't like it is a rabble rouser. That's a new word uh, like conspiracy theorist. It's not a new word, but it's a new use of the word that anyone that doesn't like getting double, triple, quadruple prices and having the quality of care cut. And anyone who knows that Republican leadership with Democrats wrote the bill as a open world government corporate tax, just like carbon taxes are, uh, this new health care tax is directly to the globalist. Supreme Court ruled private tax to offshore corporations. And if the public puts up with it, they're going to do more. And even if you revolt, they plan on using that to destabilize things and bring in martial law. And then if you start winning the battle, uh, if the states organize, uh, organize openly with the National Guard that's been federalized, uh, then they'll try to send in special forces against them. That's in the John Warner Defense Authorization Act of 2007. And then if uh, the U.S. military doesn't go along with the treason, they'll activate Al-Qaeda. Or they'll claim Al-Qaeda nukes major cities and use that to get us quaking in fear. We are held hostage. And you're like, man, that's a bold takeover. Uh, yeah, when hijackers take over a plane or bank robbers go in and, and put everybody in you know, zip ties and start robbing the vault, it's a big deal. The globalists get off on this excitement. They've got the money. They've got the power. They've got the 50 mistresses. They've got the best doctors. They've got the private jets. They've got everything. This is what they do for excitement. This is why they're in control is because they're willing to go for it all. And we sit here actually caring about a Spurs basketball player who did an anti-Nazi salute. But the uh, different political correct groups, knowing what they're doing, said, don't do that. That's racist. Apologize. That offends Jewish groups as if they speak for all the Jews in the world. So just saying any gesture, anything we deem as bad, we will label, even if it isn't racist and you're not allowed to do it. How about racist stuff is allowed? Because if you get rid of racist stuff, they will then get rid of everything. You understand that? And that's how this works. They've done it all over the world. You can't sell or possess in France Nazi memorabilia, even though you can go to a World War II museum and it's all fascinating. U.S., British, German, uh, Russian, all of it, Japanese. Oh, no. Oh, no, you're racist. All of you are guilty, but the very system that is proto-Nazi. The globalists and eugenics predate Nazism. The Nazis just got too big for their britches and were only selecting certain groups for extermination. The globalist hyper-eugenics movement goes after everyone except one-tenth of one-hundredth of one-thousandth percent. We're talking about, I've done the math, zero, point zero, 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 two, three, I think it was. If you've got 6,000 superclass in the world, average 6,000 into 7.5 billion people in the world, and you get an amazing uh, fraction. All right, I, I said I'd take your calls. I want to take your calls. We're going to cover so much coming up uh, in the next hour. So much to discuss, so much to break down. Look at this, State Department whistleblower's email hacked, messages deleted, part of the ongoing cover-up. That's just some of the news on that front. Egypt arrest Al Jazeera TV crew for ties to Muslim Brotherhood. And, of course, who runs Al Jazeera? British intelligence on record. Just like C CNN is CIA Ford Foundation Carnegie Endowment on record. Look it up. That's even in the Washington Post. It's self-CIA and naval intelligence connections. Cop gets two years for illegal cavity searches. Ah, isn't that interesting? But see, when the TSA does it, it's supposedly okay. Beyonce is slammed for sampling Challenger shuttle tragedy. I mean, you should be able to sample whatever you want. I should be able to make a music video about, about tragedies if I wanted to and have uh, radio transmissions about the Hindenburg bursting into flame. Oh, the humanity. And then play clips about war if I wanted to. But see, it's all about everything's bad and no one has speech but the establishment. And now Chicago has worst pension crisis in the U.S. I'm going to be getting to that from the Financial Times of London. That's just some of the news that I'm looking at on DrudgeReport.com.
If you go over to Infowars.com, Chinese president orders PLA to prepare for war. So now it's not just their top general, their chairman of their joint chiefs a month ago. Now it's the president. Volgrad bombings follow Saudi threat to attack Russia. I already mentioned that. Volgrad trolley blast terror attacks hit southern city day after railway station bombing. Future trends of 2014. Going under over a million lose unemployment benefits with the acceleration hitting a million by the end of next year. And an interesting art article, Anderson uh, Silva, horrifying shin break, most likely due to chronic vitamin D deficiency via dark skin. That's very important for folks. No one will tell you if you've got dark skin that you need more vitamin D and that you need more sun because you don't produce as much uh, vitamin D naturally because you come from areas that uh, are closer to the equator. So you obviously don't need to produce that much vitamin D or you'd get too much if you were out in the sun all day uh, at the equator. But if you don't live at the equator and don't get a lot of sun and you got dark skin, man, you are going to get cancer real quick. That's why if you look at it, cancer rates and the major studies are higher in blacks than any other group uh, in industrialized nations uh, in the north. You go to Africa, it's quite low. Um, but the highest cancer rates are in the western northern world uh, because of all the toxins and things, but also from not getting enough sun, period. But then you expand that and you bring people from the equator up to the north. I mean, <laughs> you're not designed to live in the north. And if you don't get vitamin D, you're going to die real fast. But again, no one's going to tell you that. <laughs> it's just 101. No one's going to tell you that. I mean, that's why blue eyes are more light sensitive and have better night vision on record. Because you're designed to live in the north where sometimes it's dark for three months. No sun for three months. That's what blue eyes are for. And then you continue on. I mean, it, it's the same deal. If a white guy went down to the middle of Africa and didn't wear, uh, didn't wear clothing, uh, you'd get skin cancer real fast. Okay, that's enough, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to your phone calls. 2013, what are the biggest stories, the most important stories, not just the biggest? And 2014, how key of a year is it? I'm going to give you my breakdown at the bottom of the next hour, but I want to get your take right now. Let's talk to Frank in North Carolina. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, thanks for taking my call. Uh, I'm starting to get a humming on my line now. I'm, yes, I'm on I hear a landline. it. Yeah, I'm on a landline, not on a speakerphone. But I agree with you. Uh, I called into a show Saturday. I think the biggest story of 2013 is the overwhelming sentiment of the American people against uh, war, at least an open conflict with uh, Syria. And that really kind of surprised me. I think it's a good thing. However, uh, I still do not see any signs of any grand awakening. And uh, I, I, I'd like to be, uh, uh, dis you know, I'd like to be wrong. I'd like to be proven wrong, but I, I don't see any grand awakening uh, in 2014. I think there's a lot of uh, dislike and distrust of Obama, and rightly so, but I think a lot of it is just this false, uh, you know, left-right control paradigm. Um, I think a lot of people probably would have been, been for war with Syria if, if uh, we'd had a Republican president such as a Mitt Romney or something like that. Very interesting points. Uh, what do you think is coming up in 2014? Um, more of the same. Um, pretty much more of the same. Uh, I think the establishment, I think the talk radio hosts across America are going to continue to protect the criminal uh, establishment. I think they're going to do so more by silence. You may have a few brave ones here and there putting, you know, putting out a few, uh, you know, good uh, warning uh, informational shows or segments or whatnot. But I, I think pe I think you're going to see a lot of people getting scared. I think a lot of the information that's coming out. Uh, my personal opinion is it's it's being leaked out to let you know that you're being watched. Uh, it's, I think a lot of it's for intimidation. I agree. That's what that's what Dr. Pachinik said, and I appreciate your call. And I'm not saying, and I've really thought about this now. Great points. Great caller. I'm not saying Snowden's a double agent, a triple agent. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. My gut tells me he's real, but they chose in the media to selectively dribble out only what they wanted to put out to try to inoculate people psychologically to accepting it and to intimidate political free speech and to normalize the rollout right as the giant NSA total surveillance grids go online. 
They want to start openly using it in court, as I predicted. Now they admit they are. They use illegally gathered data in court. Reuters has reported. They create fake investigation cases so that they can then lie to the juries if it goes to jury trial. Now they're dispensing with that and just telling the jury, we got this via you know ABC. The problem is, is that you can then frame people that much easier. Uh, so there's just a lot of problems with that, but uh, great points. Uh, Wayne in Arizona, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Alex. I'm so glad to get a hold of you. Uh, boy, I just, I've been listening for about a little over a year, maybe two, and it's incredible how informative you are, how informed you are. You must really study. Uh, my topic is uh, the politicians, the crooked politicians that are running this country and the agenda that they have. You are so on because I, I happen to grow up in Carmel, California, and Leon Panetta used to give me rides to school in the morning. And uh, a congressman by the name of Sam Farr is a family member of mine, uh, second, third cousin. However, um, he, he borrowed my dad's horse and saddle to run in his first election campaign to make himself look like a bold, brave cowboy. Uh, however, he is not. I, I can't say anything too bad against him, but I just don't think he's in our in our side of the court. Well, I mean, you don't get into the high-level power now unless you play ball with the globalist, and the problem is, is they're playing ball with the devil, so it only leads to doom and gloom on uh, letting this power structure stay in power. Uh, what do you think is coming up in 2014? I think I think lack of food for this country, and there's, if there's 50 million people that are on food stamps, they want 100 million people that are going to be dependent on them. I can see it coming. I've had trouble I had two bagels for Thanksgiving dinner this year. Wow! And uh, I, I was, I was ran out of Phoenix, Arizona, by a commission on my job that I've been doing since I was fifteen, sixteen years old, which was training racehorses. I was a jockey, racehorse rider all my life, and they, uh, they crucified me um, down there. Um, that's a different subject. Uh, but I realize that they're all the same. The politicians in the in the city, local, state governments are all in cahoots. Well, I was about to say, uh, I mean, I'm talking to builders. I talk to restaurant owners, f small factory owners. Everywhere across the country, the harassment is five, ten times, depending on where you live, what it's ever been. All the big corporations are lobbying for Agenda 21 zoning and rules that cripple everybody but them. And I have a friend who had a factory uh, in Phoenix uh, employing hundreds of people and paying them good. And the unions came and forced him to use union, and then they just shut him down, set up their own shop, and, and basically ran him out. And, and that's the same story that is just happening everywhere. Because why should these companies have to compete? They can just come in and take over. And I'm not saying unions are all bad. They had a place 100 years ago, 50 years ago, but now unions promote NAFTA and GATT. Now unions promote uh, open borders that, you know, bring in workers to replace them. It's, it's just insane. Unions have become just a political arm now of the globalist. I appreciate your call. Let's talk to Richard in Texas. Richard, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my call, Mr. Jones. The pleasure's all mine. I'll be real quick about it. Now, uh, I saw a show about eight years ago. I don't know if it was the Discovery Channel or the History Channel or the Science Channel. But it was a show showing how they can break down radioactive material and reduce it back to its original elements on the periodic chart. Now, I think that's the biggest uh, conspiracy. I think that covers, that's a perennial conspiracy as far as I'm concerned, because that's the killer that keeps on killing. Now, you probably know more about that than me, because you're well... Uh, well, they, they can use lasers and other systems and particle beams to change different radioactive isotopes. The problem is, is having the energy... To be able to say go to Fukushima and then process it all, uh, it's the energy it takes to uh, m m to manipulate the particles. I'm not a physicist, but I've read about it. But separately, yes, radiation levels are increasing all over the world, but particularly in the northern hemisphere, and it's a big issue. And I do think I didn't think of that. That is one of the big untold stories of 2013: is the radiation levels, the deterioration of the cleanup. Uh, becoming just a bigger disaster at Fukushima. Uh, I agree with you. And, and then, and of course, more and more is coming out about the automation of our world. Robot cars, robot buildings, smart grids, 
spying on us, humans being made obsolete. That's the big trend going into 2014 is you're going to see a crystallization of that. I agree. Now, I was wondering if you could uh, have a guest on, an expert that would know about that, because, like, the lady who showed, who showed the formula, she actually went to the drawing board, like, one minute left in the show, and she showed it was a simple formula. I don't, of course, I don't know the formula. I'm not a mathematician. But she said it was real easy to do. She, well, they went to Hanford Nuclear Reservation and took some of that stuff, that material, and they reduced it back down to nothingness. So that's one point. But if I could throw in two more real quick, if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, I got a chance to talk to Al Sharpton over the weekend, and Al Sharpton finally admitted that the 501c3 was really just a sham, and he said that they scared all of them. These are his words, too. He said they scared all the, 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 the clergy into thinking that they can't say anything about politics, and he said what they can do is talk about the politics and certain candidates, but they can't direct their... Uh, pews into uh, certain candidates. They can't make them vote for certain people. But then also, the third one I have is... Uh... Hold on, hold on. I want to hear more about Al Sharpton when we come back. Richard, can you stay there for a minute? Oh, no problem. Thank All right, thank you, sir. Uh, we're going to come right back with Richard, then Brad, then Michael, and many others. And we're going to talk about the big trends of 2014. student writes a story about how they're upset about it happening and describing it, and the police come and interrogate them, and in some cases arrest people who write a fiction article about, in one case, uh, one of those World War II games, and how they like to play it. And it talked about shooting soldiers, so the police came. Uh, or, again, the neighbor sees you playing with a Nerf gun in the backyard, so you're kicked out of school. The school doesn't have that jurisdiction. It's just government doing things that are illegal, out of their jurisdiction, criminal. Official oppression, false arrest, false imprisonment, false fines, and then having the judges and the courts and the culture go along with it. The school has no right to suspend somebody for five days because a neighbor saw them playing with an orange Nerf gun. That neighbor needs to be put in a mental institution. That's a real case. Those are real cases I just mentioned. And I'm going back to the caller, uh, Richard, in Texas. My point is, is it's the same thing with 501c3. In the 1950s, they had the big denominations of the World Council of Churches, other Rockefeller globalist groups say, look, order your churches to become charities under 501c3, charitable faith organizations, no longer churches. Churches under the First Amendment, the government has no jurisdiction. That's why the Hopi Indians can, you know, take peyote that's illegal under federal law, and other religious groups could take other drugs if it's really part of their religion because it's protected. That's why voodoo people can, you know, chop the heads off of goats. It's religiously protected. Or kill chickens. You know, the animal rights people don't like that. The point is, if you take away the voodoo people's rights, they're going to take your rights. And so it is a fraud. This is not my opinion. Separation of church and state means you can't have the state saying we're Catholic or we're Protestant or we're Buddhist or we're atheist. The state isn't in that business. But it doesn't mean then you can't have a Bible at public school and tell your friends about Jesus Christ at lunch. But even in Texas, they come and take your Bible. Some cases, throw them in the trash, kick the kids out. Or, or tell people that are valedictorians, you can't talk about Christ. Or, or after a football game, you can't tell the newspaper you want to thank Jesus. Well, of course you can. That's your free speech. And it's the same thing. It was the churches that led the revolution against King George. So with the Democrats, they allow, and the IRS allows the Democratic churches to raise money, do whatever they want. But if it's a libertarian or conservative church, you get audited, you get harassed, you get persecuted, and that's all been you know, out in the press. But finishing up the minute and a half we have left, I appreciate you holding. Uh, it's interesting. Where'd you run into Al Sharpton, and what else did he have to say? Uh, I was driving home from Houston, and uh, he had Andre Eglishon in his uh, studio with him. So I knew it would be a good time to bring that up. And I also tried to bring up the, the fact that they've been using the, the banks around the world, World Bank International, you know, all the stuff you talk about to destroy the world's economies. And I said the churches should be talking about that. And uh, Andre Eggleston could vouch for everything I was saying. But Al Sharkin is very clever. He knew I was going to go to the uh, drug running out of Afghanistan, too, and he kind of cut me off right there. But he was fair enough to let me get everything out. I will say that about him. 
But well, sure. I mean, Al Sharpton's a really smart guy. He knows how the whole game works, and he's playing along with the system and race baiting and everything else. Absolutely. What was now, your I'll last point? That. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, real quick. My last point was Obama being the bloodline of the Illuminati related to Vlati and Taylor and all the rest of the people throughout history that, that's ruled. Uh, I try to tell people that now, if Obama's connected bloodline, then why look at his birth certificate? Why look at Hawaii and Kenya and try to focus on his bloodline? That's who he really is. He's not a made man. He's actually born into this. So I totally agree. He's related to uh, Dick Cheney on record. You're absolutely right. Again, to see not just Detroit, but uh, many areas uh, in uh, Michigan, Illinois, California, you name it, going bankrupt. And we are in a depression. Uh, I have a large extended family, and a lot of them have been middle class, upper middle class, you name it, uh, working class. They all have been hurt, and their neighbors all think that they're in a recession or depression. Of course, you know what a recession is, is when your neighbor is out of work or going bankrupt. It's a depression whenever you, it's happening to you. By every real benchmark and all the economists we've had on, from Mark Faber to you name it, across the board using real numbers, we've been in a recession since 2008. And if you go just a year, uh, it then technically uh, is called a depression. We are in a very deep depression. When you look at the real metrics, but there are still pockets of wealth, but it is, it is really scary. And that's why they're gearing up with the whole police state. You notice that they built before all this happened. They know this bubble is going to implode or explode into World War III. And, and, and that's some of the trends I want to get into. Quite frankly, I was going to cover it earlier. I just want to write some notes during a break to kind of focus my thoughts on all the trends and what I think is most important because like a pinwheel, or like a kaleidoscope, the mind marvels and spins, at least mine does, just thinking of what an incredible time we're alive in right now. But uh, Chicago, you name it, they're all getting ready to go completely belly up. And their answer in Chicago is double this tax, triple that tax, create this tax, which will only further destroy wealth and drive people out. It's amazing. But the globalists don't care because it consolidates their power. In fact, they like making people poor. That's what makes me so angry. I hear about somebody eating bagels for Thanksgiving, or I, I see people that I've known who are doing well now, who are going bankrupt, and folks that can't even pay for gas to drive to work, and the family's breaking up, and the, and the society degenerating, and then people more narcissistic, more entertainment-driven. The spirit of this world is so powerful, it's hard for even me to overcome. And only through prayer and just trusting in God uh, and, uh, do I have peace. And, and I don't think I could handle the things I've gone through. Five years ago, I couldn't have handled all the things that I see in my life. And I guess that which does not kill you only makes you stronger. But there's a Bible verse about with great wisdom comes great sorrow. And it, it, it is a feeling of sorrow, but it's also a very deeply fulfilling feeling to be discerning and aware and sensitive. I'm glad I'm conscious and awake. It's very powerful. It's a very uh, enlightening experience, and, and I wouldn't want to be a zombie. But I understand why the general public are just shuffling zombies, letting the media program them, because reality is big. And it's lovely, dark, and deep on the surface. And it has many good things in it, but also many bad things. And when you juxtapose the good things next to the bad things, it makes the bad things even that much more abhorrent. And it makes you see the bad things in yourself. Bad things that you don't follow through on, bad things that you don't manifest. But nevertheless, you have the knowledge of the good and evil. And so even having the knowledge of evil technology, and by evil technology, systems of manipulation, to even understand the enemy is to become the enemy. I wouldn't go as far as Ender's game and say is to love the enemy. But you know the enemy's love of evil. And knowing that passion is sharing that passion. Staring into the mind of Satan. We'll be right back there. And almost everyone who did uh, 
go in when it first exploded to try to emergency fix things have died now. Uh, and it's come out in mainstream Japanese media that the government was covering up the level of the radiation. So the government just passed an executive order two weeks ago in the diet, uh, basically giving them martial law powers over information. So there you have it. Uh, coming up, I'm going to break down the big trends of 2014 and why I think it's such a critical year. We're also going to look at U.S. public finance. Day of Reckoning Chicago is tackling the worst pension crisis in the U.S., but methods that got it in a bind are still used across America. I love how the globalist publications like the Financial Times of London that's able to attend Bilderberg at the very top of the financial publication pyramid. I love how they always, just like in Spain, just like in Greece, just like in Ireland, just like in uh, other places like Iceland, they're always acting like there's a way to fix it. This was designed to bankrupt everything and take over. This is how the globalists conquer you. Any farmer will tell you that when the farm's 20th year comes up and you're going to pay it off, that, that a couple years before that comes up, they will accelerate the whole note with a clause in the uh, deed, a clause in the contract to try to make you pay the last couple of years in one lump sum or they take it from you. And the only reason that that stopped is because in the old days, even up until the 70s, bankers and savings and loan people that did that got shot in the head. But Americans don't act like that anymore. We roll over. And when you roll over, gangsters come in, they take over. People think laying down is how you get liberty. If you went into the wilds of, uh, say, Alaska and started rolling around on the ground and, and, and squealing like a dead rabbit, wolves would come and eat you. And we act like a dying, squealing rabbit. America's new anthem should be a varmint tape of a dying baby squirrel. I mean, that's the call we put out, squealing. Oh, take my rights. Oh, spy on me. Oh, checkpoints. Oh, proctology exams on the highway. Oh, teach my kids to rat on me because the scourge of drugs, when the government ships the drugs in, is trying to put the kids on Adderall and Ritalin and all these Prozac drugs. Oh, you know, take kids that are five pounds overweight from their parents and put them in government custody to put them on seven different drugs and where they're five to seven times more likely to be sexually or physically abused. I mean, no one is looking at the threat and the fruits of this giant global government system. Let me tell you, cherry pie doesn't come out the end of this thing. Freedom and prosperity didn't come out of the end of it. What comes out of it is slavery and poverty and ignorance. And I don't want to say horse manure because horse manure is actually useful for crops. This is beyond BS, ladies and gentlemen. Bravo, Sierra. And... You've got to admit you've been cheated. You've got to admit you've been conned. You've got to admit you've been put in a lackadaisical. Television is what killed America and killed the world. The question is, can we come back from the dead? People are caught in entertainment. If one more man walks up to me on the street or at the grocery store and says, hey, you know, did you see the Cowboys last night? What would you think? I had three people come up to me today and talk to me about the Cowboys last night. And I looked at all of them. I said, man, there's too much going on in the real world to care about the Cowboys. And I went and ate dinner by myself late last night after that game. And I was sitting there in a restaurant. People were coming over to me who were my listeners, but still bringing up the Cowboys. Losing. And I was just like, man, come on. And, and, and all the reporters, real serious, like they're reporting on World War III about what's happening with football. That's why we're slaves, because people are experts and men get real serious about a game. And so this morning I was watching a little bit of television and watching different NFL games and clips from them and watching grown men who are supposed to be captaining starships by this point and are supposed to be trailblazing, you know, undersea projects and are supposed to be leading and guiding their children and directing the culture and are supposed to be leaders with goals are running around in little outfits in simulated combat with each other, slapping each other on the butts. And look, I can get into the football. I can sit there and learn all about it and it's a male soap opera and, 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 and get into it. I, I get it. 
But as our whole culture goes down the rat hole, as our government funds Al-Qaeda to attack Russia to destabilize the Olympics, as Saudi Arabia promised to do three months ago, because Russia won't hand over Syria to Al-Qaeda, as, as the cashless society goes in, as the robot cars hit the streets, as they set up the robotic slave systems in France and in, uh, of all places, China to replace humans, as the globalists announce that when they have all this in place and a robot army of drones uh, in place, they'll release the bioweapons and start the war against humanity. I'm convinced they could release bioweapons right now and people would still go along with it. And still go along with whatever they say. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible. We're living in a hardcore science fiction movie. And women are just incredibly, on average, so shallow, so petty, so insecure, so stupid. Men, so shallow, so insecure. I mean, I remember being like 12 years old, walking into a restaurant, being self-conscious when people were looking at me. I remember being a little bit like that, but I mean, now just having it, not being self-conscious is so good. But then I see other adults that are so self-conscious. I don't care if they're rich or poor, black or white. And all of the idiosyncratic stuff and all the neurotic stuff and all of the, you know, somebody in a fancier car than yours pulling up beside you and revving it so you look over so they can look down on your car. And you just look over at them and it's just like... You're not feeling bad because they have a nicer car than you. You're feeling bad because they literally are that shallow narcissistically that they need to feel like a horse running up beside another horse that is faster than you. And that psychology is just so base. But that's how they manipulate everybody. These are the issues that are so frustrating to see humanity becoming more decadent, not more enlightened. I mean, I would be watching on the sat feed as the first explorers arrive on Europa. And by the way, with the technology the globals have had, we could have been there 20 years ago, probably are. With probes, at least we know. They could already have basically giant extraction units on different planets we know have incredible resources and different planetoids and could already have huge off-war colonies. And I would be watching the sat screens cheering on the settlers. I mean, that would be, and you'd see a ship, you know, malfunction and its reactor blow up. And that would be watching real men and women out there, you know, uh, doing space jumps and, uh, and all of it. I mean, that's what I want, not men in tight slapping each other on the ass. Excuse me. I mean, that we need to be going into space. We need to be getting the life extension technology. We need to be going into the deep earth. We need to be going into the seas. And if they built up trailblazers again, if they built up leadership again, humans would want that and would support it in the market of ideas and would support corporations and governments that did it. And we could do anything together, but we need goals. Look at all the palaces and temples and pyramids built by man before by ancients. And we are building nothing but fraud and lies. Our civilization is not building anything but deception because the globalists already have all the advanced technology. They're really giddy about it. They're on power trips. That's the ultimate wealth is knowledge. And they are shuttering the world from human advancement. And I don't like seeing myself and my family walled off in it. I don't like losing humanity to this. We're going to skip this network break because I'm behind going to calls. Let's go ahead and talk to Brad in Pennsylvania. Thanks for holding. You're on the air. What do you think the most important stories, not the manufactured biggest stories, but what are the most important stories, the most important stories of 2013, and what do you see coming in 2014? Uh, most important story of 2013, I would say, would be Obamacare. Number one, false flags, false flag terrorism to put a soft kill on firearms. Number two, Snowden, close three, and uh, Congress and the president's unpopularity right there with, with the, the other four. What was number two again? Because I like your list. You got Obamacare. What was number two? Uh, false flags in the U.S., which are creating a soft kill on firearms. Oh, sure. The stage, some of the stage manufactured shootings. We know Boston oh, yeah. bombing was staged. That, that's crazy. You cover it better than anybody, Alex. And that's, and people, 
Like the, like the one that they just recently had on the anniversary of uh, Sandy Hook, right? I yes. don't think you touched on it when I was listening to you. I didn't hear you pounce on that enough saying, hey, it's on the anniversary. It's probably another manufactured staged event. But yeah, folks stopped him, absolutely. And he, he, he was a liberal uh, video game head, atheist, so, a, a quote, devout socialist who went in there to kill the conservatives. That we right, but the bigger my bigger point is it happened on the same day. It's Very, not a coincidence. No, I agree. They were trying to pull something off, and it didn't go well. And it was in Colorado again. Keep it in our consciousness. Hey, here's another one. Here's another one. You got to take our guns. You know, I don't even have guns, but I think everybody should because the tyranny's coming. That's 2014, probably. Is why don't uh, you have guns? Why? Yeah. I just never have. I mean, I even well, though it's I no big deal. Middle, Once you go shoot one, you're like, this is the big deal. Just go get it. Get a revolver as your first gun. 357 Magnum. It's all on TV where the lady shoots it and she flies back. There's really no kick on a 357 to speak of. And I mean, there's there's more kick in a blender when you turn it on to blend uh, whatever you're making. And just take it to the shooting range. Get a lesson at the shooting range. And it's really no big deal. They, they add such a mystique to firearms. I mean, there is a mystique to twin firing uh, 50 cal Barrett's with the armor piercing tracer at night. I mean, that's kind of fun. Hand firing a 50 cal is fun. But what else uh, do you see coming up in 2014? Um, economic meltdown. I know you've probably heard of this already, but uh, I know Lindsey Williams has it just got out a new video talking about uh, economic reset or something like that, currency reset. Something's going to happen here soon because I mean they're like you always say they're all they're all prepared for it. They're, that's why they're getting the uh, the the uh, military in place to for the it's for the people. There's no question. Ever since 9/11, as you said, it's it's all been it's it's a, it's a it's a it's it's confusing for the people, but it's it's not the it's not the uh, Middle East or the jihadis or whatever you want to say that they're focused on. It's us. They're coming. They're just boomeranging it back on the American people because the economy is going to take a crap and we're all going to be that's right up the creek. That's right. And that was that was always the plan. The plan was always they've done this in country after country, testing it, priming it. They've got a hundred and. I think it's 12-point IMF World Bank plan that got leaked where they engineer this. I mean, that's why we know what they do. It's like I'm a football coach, to use that analogy, and I have the other team's playbook. I've sent spies in to steal it. We have the playbook. But in their case, they publish the playbook. Uh, that's how dumb they think we are. That is so frustrating. That Why do you think they are so open about a lot of what they do? Because most of us are clueless. We're like you, you know, we're like you said, we're dumbed down to the point of, you know, it, it, until we get our butt kicked, like we're going to get it kicked here soon in the next few years, and people are not going to wake up, you know, and then and by then it may be too late. Like you always say. Well, I agree. I agree. They, they have tested us, and I appreciate your call. Excellent points, Brad. Thanks for calling. Hope you had a great Christmas and a wonderful new year coming up. <laughs> At least we're here not being caught flat footed, but I'll be honest with you. I am incredibly flat-footed when it comes to this because I know how they work. I know how they operate. I know what screen time does to children. I know what GMO does. I know how families and women and everything works. But it's still, it's one thing to know how something works. It's another thing to have the will, even in your own life, to do things right. And, and I'm, I'm a pretty good dad and good husband and things, but... Yeah, there's a lot more I could have done where I've been so focused on fighting the new world order that in my own life, I'm not that ready for what's coming. I'm, I'm, I'm more ready than most. I mean, I live out in the countryside and I've tried to get ready, but I'm just here warning people. That's, that's all I can do. And there's no reason that they've got to implode the country. The problem is they set up a system where it's like a self propelling perpetual motion machine where they've basically got us to the point now where it'll be very hard for them to even reverse what they've done. The only way to do it is to write off all the derivatives, arrest the globalist, uh, stop letting them invest 70 plus percent of all the tax money in offshore money inside the comprehensive annual financial reports. Yeah, only about 25% of the money goes to even be invested uh, in the budget. And, and that's, by the way, a public secret that I've been exposing for 16 years. <laughs> and 
and no one will cover it or talk about it. That's what I mean. It's just all a giant total fraud. It's all a facade. It's all a huge lie. That's why talk radio is being prepared to be dismantled across the board. They've taken the money out of it. They've taken the funding out of it. Uh, the other big talk radio networks out there, we're independent, so we're different and able to fund ourselves because we operate on a much smaller budget. Uh, but the big banks that own the large syndicators, they just have unlimited trillions now. Why should banks loan to anybody? Uh, why should uh, they even allow media to operate? Why should they keep funding all these networks that lose money? They're just going to get rid of it all. They're going to get rid of all the establishment media, the establishment right-wing media, the establishment left-wing media. They're now defunding you people. You're the traitors that opened the drawbridge at midnight and let the enemy in. And now, do you think the enemy that's taken the castle is going to put you in charge? No. They don't want you around. They are going to take you, and they are going to chain you up, and they're going to politically slit your throat. You people, historically, are the first on the list. I hope you know what you've done. And I hope you got enough money to get out of the Western world. Because the New World Order doesn't like you knowing where the bodies are buried. They're going to come after you. They always do, fools. Hitler and the Night of the Long Knives against the SA. Lenin, Stalin, all the purges. You're going to be airbrushed out of history. You little narcissistic nobodies reading off their playlists. You didn't have the basic instinct to see evil coming down on us and to resist it. You thought it was cute to join with the wickedness. <laughs> You thought you'd get power out of working with this long term? Fools. You have given up reason for madness. Mm. Look at what you've done. And look at what all of you in the Pentagon going along with this have done. You have destroyed your birthright. You have destroyed your family. We have been set up. And thank God I was born into a family that was aware of this stuff and that I have never been part of it. Thank God that I'm not with you. And I'm not on some high horse saying that. The, the, the spiritual debt your families now owe to the world, those of you that have been part of this, the bad things that are going to happen to you from a reap what you sow, karmic perspective, you could say, it makes the God-fearing soul I have shudder. When I look at what is going to happen to you. And I'm certainly not a good person either. But I am aware of my evil. I don't like it. And I don't want to be part of it. And I reject it. But all of you out there who have served evil. You better repent now before it's too late. Even if you don't believe in God folks. You better get your gut straight. Get your head screwed on straight. And make a conscious decision that you're not with this. And then go out and reprieve yourself now. And you will feel empowered, you will feel alive, and we could turn the tide. But you've got to decide that you were wrong. You've got to decide that you sold out to evil. You've got to decide you lied to yourself. You've got to look in the mirror, all of us do, and decide that we're going to be better people. And by the way, that's what's fulfilling when you do the right thing, when you are honorable, when you do have courage. It's not fulfilling to be a minion of wickedness. I'm going to stop preaching. Back to your calls. Michael in Arizona, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hello. Hey, hey Alex. Good talking to you again. Good talking um, to you. Absolutely. Um, belated Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. And happy rest of the holidays, New Year's and whatever. Stay at home. It's uh, amateur night. You know that as well as I do. Um, as far as 2013 goes. Yes, sir. Um. I really, there's been some good callers today, but I, I want to requote your phrase from yesterday that you had some great callers yesterday, and they mentioned a lot of things. And I remember this one particular guy that just conglomerated everything, and he put in all the um, Snowden and uh, Obamacare, this and that, and everything. But one thing that hasn't been mentioned a whole lot is the radiation that's going into seafood coming from Fukushima. I did a research paper in college spring of 
2011 that had to do with overfisheries. And over the past hundred years, it's like we're down to 10% of the number of fish. And they're, they're hitting the West Coast now. I've warned my brother, and he's aloof. He doesn't care. My mom's asleep. I'm trying to wake them up. They don't want to listen. But I know. People it, think it's cool not to care. And they think you're weak. Whereas in the old days, it was a virtue to care. Now it's like, oh, look, that guy cares. <laughs> he wants to know how the world works. What an idiot. Well, I love seafood. And, I mean, you had the BP oil spill down in the Gulf back, uh, what, three, five years ago, something like that. You know, so that screwed up all those shrimp. And I like tuna. I like seafood. And no, whatnot. no, I agree. Overfishing is a real issue. And instead, they've used uh, global laws to restrict local fishers or individuals getting fish and then letting the big trawlers go out and get whatever they want. I don't care if it's the U.S., Mexico, where you are in the world. It is despicable. Great point, sir. No, the, 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 the world is in major crisis. Not the fashion trends, not the sports trends, not the um, trendiness, but the things that all that trendiness is meant to distract us from. So that's just some of what's... Uh, coming up briefly, uh, please don't forget this whole broadcast is listener supported. And uh, I've phased out sponsorship to a great extent uh, just because uh, I want to come back in the new year with a new formatted system of sponsorship that's more focused, more researched, uh, because uh, I, I want to make sure that all the sponsors I do have are absolutely uh, the highest standard. We already have the highest standards out there when you hear myself endorsing something. The network has their own advertisers. Some are great, I'm sure. I just don't have time to research it. And I, just at a gut level, uh, will not promote something anymore unless I 100% know it's the best. I just will not do it. So that's why uh, we have great sponsors, a whole bunch of them. A lot of them are great. I, I just don't, don't even have the personnel or the crew or the system to properly handle even the good sponsors we had. So I'm revamping everything next year. Uh, and we are funded by the products we sell, by the PrisonPlanet.tv memberships, and we've been able to fund the operation and its expansion thanks to your support. So I want to thank you for all your support over the years, all the patriots and liberty lovers worldwide. I know times are tough out there, and I want to thank everybody into the new year as well. Um, ProPure is the best gravity-fed stainless steel filters that cut out the fluoride, the glyphosate, you name it. There's a lot of other companies claiming this and that. I could be selling those. I don't. I sell what I use, what my family uses. I've done the research. I didn't have a filter company for two years because I couldn't find one that was good enough. Promo code WATER10. Promo code WATER10 or WATER. Both codes will get you 10% off at InfoWarsStore.com. So WATER is the word to get 10% off at InfoWarsStore.com on their entire line. Or you can call toll-free 888 Two five three three one three nine triple eight two five three three one three nine. Also, we have in supply, but it's running out again. It's happening again, uh, and it'll be about four weeks till we get more. It might sell out in the next week. Uh, we have the Survival Shield proprietary National Academy of Sciences certified nascent iodine, unlike any other iodine out there. It is true nascent, and I'm not knocking the other alcohol-based ones that taste like rocket fuel. The doctors I've talked to say that's good as well, but it's probably not really nascent. We've had it looked at and tested some of the brands. It's bound. It's, it's mixed with the alcohol. Uh, it just doesn't have the same effect. Real nascent turns blue, purple. And so you will see that with our survival shield available at InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com also has a link there. And the fluoride shield is the best value even over survival shield. We do have that in. It's in a two-ounce bottle, not a one-ounce bottle. So you get two ounces for $39.95, not one ounce for $29.95. And it has the nascent iodine in it as well, but five other systems, organic, the best out there, Shilogy, you name it, known to absolutely detoxify not just, not just uh, fluoride, but a whole bunch of other toxins and heavy metals. And warning when you take this, go to a physician beforehand because it's all legal, lawful, what they call, you know, FDA grass you know, certified stuff that's known to be safe, the highest standard. The point is, is that still we're so toxic that taking this stuff, you know, I, I detoxed and, and I'm still detoxing. I still lead an unhealthy lifestyle in many areas, but people can see the difference in my face, difference in my eyes, difference 
uh, and clarity. My family's seen it. People around here that have been taking it have seen it. I mean, this is the real deal. This is the real deal. And I would challenge you in the new year to get a bottle of Fluoride Shield. It's two ounces, for, so you get double for only $10 more. And it has the nascent iodine in it as well. So it's really the best value out there. So InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. We have a video there breaking down what's in it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's the real deal. It will start detoxing you. Get ready for stuff to come out of your skin and come out other ways. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the real deal. And I'm only four months into all this because uh, I did it for several months before I, you know, then mass produced it. And, 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 and this is from years of research with wide spectrum experts. This is the best stuff I could find. InfoWarsLife.com, 888-253-3139. And lastly, we have the Christmas special. We're extending into New Year's for at least a week or two. You can get 11 memberships for $5.95 on a monthly membership to share them with friends and family to see the nightly news and more. Or, and support the tip of the spear for the First Amendment and true independent liberty media, pro-Second Amendment, you name it, pro-family, pro-property. We, we are being attacked by the White House run, MSNBC, M, uh, Media Matters, you name it, because we are having a big effect. We are defending liberty. And it's a great way to support the broadcast and wake up friends and family and we're going to extend the special where you can get five months free when you sign up for a year, five months off the uh, yearly price. Basically, you buy like six, 6 6.7 months, and you get five point something months free uh, when you calculate it all out at prisonplanet.tv. So I want to thank all the members. And if you're not a member or you used to be a member in the past, we've really revamped, made the site even better. It's on Roku. It's on Boxy and so many other systems. So you can watch on your television. So you can have friends and family over to see the nightly news and see Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson and David Knight and uh, Darren McBreen and John Bound and all the rest of our uh, great crew do what they do. So again, thank you all for being PrisonPlanet.tv members. If you're not a member, 11 memberships for $5.95 a month. One membership, 11 people can use. Okay, PrisonPlanet.tv. Okay, let's go back to your calls. And, and yeah, I'm just not ready yet. And I, I wrote a bunch of it down, but I want to brainstorm some more during breaks. To really try to give you, what in my mind, what I think is going to happen in 2014 and what I think the main trends are. And it's not that I'm not decisive. It's just that there's so much there that I'll do it at the start of the next hour. I'm going to go to your calls right now. Then I'll get into the Volgrad attacks. Uh, sounds like something out of a movie. Talk about a barbarian named Volgrad. Uh, the bombings of train stations and trolleys over there. And Saudi Arabia is saying they were going to do this a few months ago. Uh, this is not a false flag from what I've seen because the motive is to screw up the look at the numbers of, of what this, this Winter Olympics is meant to bring in. I've seen numbers of six billion, 10 billion for prestige for Russia, maybe more. I mean, this is, hey, if you don't give us Syria, we're going to activate Al Qaeda all across your southern flank, your soft, ruski underbelly. And. You can see the Swiss Army knife of Al Qaeda, how it's used against America to take our liberties. It's used against the Russians. The criminal bankers are using it. And I don't think I've been predicting that you're going to see massive false flags all over the world by Al Qaeda forces. And, and by false flags, Al Qaeda is a tool of the banksters. So that's the false flag. And that's the big hoax to go, Alex, you don't believe there's Muslim extremists? I've never said they aren't. I'm not saying that. Guys from the army go and wire the World Trade Center with bombs. Inside criminal groups plant the bombs in the buildings. They had evacuation shutdowns of whole floors for months doing construction where the bombs went off. They have people that get on board who are double agents. We know working for the CIA who also work for Saudi intelligence on record. That's been declassified. That came out in Congress that some of those guys were double agents, bare minimum. But then you're not supposed to talk about that. No, that went on. And then whatever really happened, the, the only real cell phone calls, cell phones don't work above 4,000 feet. I've flown, I don't know, let's not exaggerate, 40, 50 times since the 9-11. And I always, obnoxiously, in fact, I want to fly next time and have somebody fly with me and shoot video of this, where I'm going to be on the phone, taking off from Austin, and within about 2,000 feet, it cuts out. I've gotten as high as about three, 4,000 before. You ask how I know, I can see radio towers that are 1,000 feet tall and tell. Uh, the point, and then, you know, but basically estimate my height. The point is, you're, you're in the air two minutes, your cell phone drops. Sometimes a minute. Everybody knows that. But now, oh, the FCC looks at authorizing cell phones. 
those are cell phones like on a cruise ship. If you're on a cruise ship 500 miles from Galveston or 1,000 miles, your cell phone isn't working to, to Austin when I call family. It goes through a big hub that goes to a satellite from the ship. And that's what they're authorizing for airlines to charge you when you fly. Just like you have internet now on airplanes. <clears throat> but I've seen these articles discrediting Alex Jones. Look, cell phones are going to work. The FCC is going to let them do it. The FCC is looking at them putting high-powered satellite links and other systems on the planes so you can use the, 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 the cell phones that are already there in data packages with Internet, like on Virgin Atlantic and others that have come out within the last two years. Man, the ignorance of people. Oh, look, cell phones now work in the sky. There were supposedly hijacker calls that were made at 33,000 feet from non-air phones. And the FBI, to their credit, went and looked at the Solicitor General claiming his wife had called him. Those phone calls were not made. My wife called me when the hijackers were on board and it's around 30,000 plus feet and, and no one called. They're, the only real calls were from air phones, which again, go through a coupler link. It's old technology. And it was stewardesses saying, there's gas, I can't breathe. The only two real calls were, there's a bomb. We've been told to stay where we're at, but we can't breathe. There's a gas. And the intel, the best intel we've got, and high-level people I've talked to who weren't involved in it, but are high-level analysts, have, have broken down to me from the airlines and other places. I'm just going to leave it at that. That what they believe is, they told them it was a drill, just like James Woods saw Muhammad Ad and others do a drill of a hijacking and a bomb takeover with air marshals on flights two weeks before 9-11. They thought it was another drill, which they have. The guys get on board. Gas is released. They tell everybody, be calm. We're just doing a drill. Get, you know. Uh, it's a bomb, you know, things, stewardesses call, they release a gas, knock everybody out, the guys in the drill don't know it, remote control takes control of the aircraft. I remember being made fun of being told there's no such thing as remote controlling aircraft. They were remote controlling aircraft in World War II, not just from the German side, but uh, JFK's older brother, who was going to be the guy that they were going to run for president, but Joe Kennedy Jr., he died in a chase plane, a fighter plane, directing... Multiple, multiple B-17s loaded with explosives. That's how, that's how the Allies had drones. They didn't have the V-1s, V-2s and stuff the Germans had that were pilotless. They would have chase planes with radio. And he was piloting the plane while making adjustments, steering multiple drone, drone weapons. And then they sent up a bunch of German, I think it was Folkwolfs, they said were thought to have been the ones that took him out. Was it Folkwolf 109s? Point is, is that, is that this is the type of stuff that goes on, ladies and gentlemen. That's calling of a plane, people's wolf. But the issue here is, I'm ranting and said I'd go to your calls. See, I can go into any subject and start talking about it because it's so frustrating. Those phone calls were fake. The only two real air phone calls said, we can't breathe, there's a gas. I don't know what happened on 9-11, but the official story has more holes in it than a, a, a sieve, than a colander, than the Swiss cheese moon of indoor. All right, let's go to your phone calls. Thank you for holding. John in Wyoming, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hey, buddy. Uh, I think the probably the ongoing cover-up of Benghazi is probably the biggest story of 2013. Because they're still lying about it. They're still covering it up. All the networks are covering it up. Because I exposed this, too, as you have been doing for, for quite some time. I exposed this in a letter to the editor on September 8th. And it was a long thing. And I exposed the fact that Ambassador Stevens and his colleagues were murdered because they were complaining about all of the chemical weapons and automatic weapons and Stinger missiles that the CIA was funneling through Benghazi to the al-Qaeda elements in Syria. And of course, of course, I've been widely criticized by the lapdog news media and some of their minions out there. But let me tell you a couple of things that have happened recently here, if I may. Uh, the county commissioners, <clears throat> these... Uh, Lapdogs for Agenda 21, 
on the 17th of December passed an ordinance which requires people living along the creek to build uh, any structures at least one foot above the floodplain. So it's purely Agenda 21. And out of and again, minutes, most of the houses are already in a 100-year floodplain, and this is all global agendas where they basically restrict most of the property but then unrestrict their property, selectively increasing the value of their property. And out of more than 20,000 people living in Sheridan County, Wyoming, only three of us showed up to complain about these. And, of course, they are always given the kid glove treatment by the lapdog prostitute news media. Now, also, Friday I found out this last Friday, the 27th, that the previous day, Thursday, the 26th, that at least four B-1 bombers were cruising around the area. See, if you go to uh, Ellsworth Air Force Base on the east side of Rapid City, well, didn't South you just Dakota, have didn't you just have one crash out there a while back? Uh, no, but uh, the B-1 bombers are controlled out of Ellsworth oh, no, no. Air Force Base. Uh, hold on, there, I, I think there was the one crash this year out west, but go ahead. Yeah, it was further. It wasn't around here, but uh, they had four B-1s cruising around the area. And this is the same Air Force base that controls the drones that drop on people's heads all over the world. And it's the same Air Force base that sends these B-1s anywhere in the world to drop bombs on them 24 hours a day. And, of course, the lapdog prostitute news media that we have here in Wyoming doesn't cover anything Whenever you go up there, as I did, to stop this Agenda 21 item that the county commissioners passed unanimously, and I tried to stop it, and I said, who are you going to emulate, the Founding Fathers when they crafted the Bill of Rights in 1791, or Karl Marx when he crafted the Communist Manifesto in 1848? I said, one of the planks of the Communist Manifesto is the abolition of private property ownership. So what are you people doing? You're using overregulation and overtaxation to accomplish the same goals, to drive people off their property because of overregulation and overtaxation. Sure, that's the plan. I got to jump here in a minute. What do you think's coming in 2014? I think you're going to see all kinds of like you said false flag operations. You're also going to see uh the Ben Bernanke and his cronies now uh, Janet Yellen uh, further devalue the dollar. The dollar is going to very likely collapse sometime in 2014, and they're going to have all kinds of uh, false flag operations so they can give themselves an excuse to raid people's houses to confiscate their firearms. I hear you. Uh, next year, it's going to be that uh, giant wave that's taken uh, two plus years to get here from Fukushima of uh, debris. Just untold tons of it uh, is to be hitting the west coast the next three to four months it's going to start in the next month but just continue piling up so that's that's one of the trends um but syria war not going the way the globalists wanted they're now lashing on at russia clearly like saudi arabia said we're going to use al-qaeda to attack you we run them i think that's really the big trend is people are waking up but if you're not awake you'll just buy anything or, or maybe that's not even it the system knows they can't hide what they do anymore. So Saudi Arabia, where 15 of the 19 hijackers supposedly came from on 9-11, openly runs al-Qaeda against Syria, Libya, Egypt, and now Russia, and says we're going to start bombing right before the Olympics, and we're going to bomb the Olympics. This is letting them know they're serious. They just bombed twice where the Olympics are coming, killing more than 30 people. And our media is like increased security in New York and other areas after Al-Qaeda groups hit Russia. And, and this is the criminal media and the criminal hijacked government attacking Russia and then even using their attack, thinking we're so dumb to go and we're going to take your rights because you saw what's happening in Russia with the Al-Qaeda. And that's why I get so angry at TSA people because they're there getting radiated all day. They're having their rights taken too. I don't dislike them as people. But they'll do the chat down. Oh, where are you going, Mr. Jones? And I go, let me guess. You know I'm a listener. That doesn't matter. I do know who you are, but I'm still going to ask where you're going. You know where I'm going. And, they, and then they'll really be mean to other people in these chat downs. And I'm like, listen, I'm done with you.
And I did this in front of Leanne McAdoo when we flew back from England, covering Bilderberg. I said, listen, the government runs Al-Qaeda and everybody knows it. Now stop asking me questions. And they were like, oh, you can go, you can go. And I'm, I mean, I just can't handle it anymore, man. The government runs Al-Qaeda. And then you want to make me a suspect? Our stinking government's been taken over by criminals and they're bombing the Russians right now. We're lucky the Russians don't start attacking us. But they know it's global is doing it. But I'm telling you, the Saudi Arabian government better watch their butt. I am sick of their domestic operations as well. They're involved in our media trying to shut people up. We've had clearly what we believe is Saudi intelligence mess with one of our reporters. And I'm not putting up with your crap. You think you run the whole world? You don't. I'm just so sick of it. I meant to go to calls and start ranting. It makes me angry, ladies and gentlemen, because I don't care about money at the end of the day. I don't care about fame at the end of the day. In fact, it's a prison. What I care about is not letting these scum win and take over and make me and my future family a slaves. I care about survival. And it makes me mad that the criminals that run our country that have hijacked it at Benghazi, like the callers that were giving them nerve gas and missiles and all the rest of it. And then they all get caught lying and nobody gets in trouble. And I'm just sitting here. It's all a joke. It's like when a cop pulls me over and asks if I have any drugs in the car. And I'm like, listen, the government brings in most of the drugs. Do I look like I'm on drugs, buddy boy? And we're going to continue with your phone calls. I'm going to take a few now. At the start of the next segment, I will give you my trends for 2014. Uh, let's go to Truth Raider calling from Oregon. You're on the air. Thanks for calling in. Hey there, there's the leader of the truth of, of the world. How you doing, brother? And oh, happy yeah. New Year to you. Oh, yeah. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who the leader of the world is. It's the devil. Yeah, yeah, that, that, unfortunately. And we're all at battle to try to displace him until the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Anyway, brother, a uh, couple of things. Most of the callers, great callers that called in today, but I'm, I'm afraid they stole my thunder. Snap. Uh, but anyway, a couple of other things. What happened in 2013, my take on it was at the beginning of the year, going on Piers Morgan show, getting some exposure and being able to tell the nation things that they haven't heard before. That's 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 one of the big things. Yeah, I don't tend to talk about myself unless it's educational to show how they do tricks. And so I guess there is a reason I can do that. Guys, I know it's here, but I can't find it. Will you print me that L.A. Times saying I was the number one? Oh, here it is. Yeah, number one uh, story uh, of uh, 2013 um, politically was uh, Alex Jones on Piers Morgan. But notice all the things they picked, they believed were balkanizing. So that's their main goal. But Alex Jones versus Piers Morgan, I don't think it was balkanizing. It, it actually stated that they are trying to take our guns to enslave us. So I got outside of his debate. I circumnavigated his little controlled paradigm outside the box. That's why they didn't have me back is because we won that debate. We kicked his butt. Go ahead. Yes, exactly. That's what you did is you changed that. You broke that. And that's one of the biggest stories of the year. And, you, and the, uh, of course, all the, throughout the years. By the way, you know who did that? It was pointed out to me like three months after. I didn't even know this. Matt Drudge tweeted CNN. I'm going from memory on this. So I remember seeing on wow. But I go back to memory. Matt Drudge tweeted to CNN saying you should have Alex Jones on Piers Morgan. So, again, that's Matt Drudge just like out there, never talking, just keeps walking, spreading his magic. Go ahead. Right, yeah. That going on Howard Stern, all of that being able to be recognized and, and people, you know, liked your persona. They, they, they liked that you were speaking the truth and you were different from the mainstream media. Uh, mogul robots that, that spit out the propaganda with their scripts. Uh, the other thing that, can, that uh, I know is personally in my life this year, all the three groups that I've gone to, all the truth groups, the UFO conference, 9-11 uh, Truth Alliance, and the Red Pill meetings, have, the growth in the, of the attendance has grown exponentially throughout this, throughout this year. So I well, think listen, I mean, so-called conspiracy and rabble-rousing, as the media calls it, criticize Obamacare, you're a rabble-rouser. Don't believe known liars, you're a conspiracy terrorist. Uh, you know, got an ex-convict, you know, a con artist living next door to you. Don't trust him. You're weird. You're supposed to trust known criminals. That's what the government is. Uh, I mean, they are the main suspects historically. That's what the founders told us. And so, uh, of course, the so-called conspiracy culture is growing as people try to find out what's really going on. Questioning is now being a heretic. Well, welcome to Planet Heretic. The system has lost the public. Exactly. 
Yeah. And going into 2014, I think the biggest things that are going to be coming down the pike, well, of course, we've got the 2014 false elections coming up. The, the selection process, is the, as you guys would, would call it. Presidents are not elected. They're selected. So that's the big thing that's going to be coming up and probably the revelation of who that guy really is in the White House. I call him Frankie Davis Jr., that's who I think he is. I think he, he, he's absolutely not Obama. He's an imposter. I agree I uh, with dreams of my real father. I've seen the photos of him. Uh, he would spend time with Frank Marshall Davis every summer. His grandfather would bring him to him when he was a communist pornographer. Uh, that's why they created the whole Kenya thing and said he was born in Kenya and his Harvard deal and why Michelle said it before the election. They were using that as a distraction beforehand. He's not really from Kenya. He is the son of Frank Marshall Davis. I think it's incontrovertible. If they're unable to get that message out as the alternative and get substantive gains in the House to block the rhinos who vote with the Democrats for every form of corruption and dismantling and looting of this country, if they don't go out aggressively and point out that we're going into classical tyranny and, and really call the bureaucracy and Obama and the Republican leadership traitors and enemies of America then they're not fighting back. When you're being overrun and dominated, you've got to tell it like it is. And yeah, it sounds extreme to say we have total criminals that have hijacked the country and are shutting it down on purpose and attacking the family and trying to bankrupt us and make us dependent on government to domesticate us. But that's what the globalists say. That's what it is. I would imagine if you, for whatever reason, were a worker in somebody's basement and accidentally a locker fell over and there were two dead bodies in it and you'd get out of the house as soon as you could and call the police and you'd feel weird on 911 saying I'm, I'm a worker I was putting in some uh, vents in this basement and there's dead bodies but there are dead bodies so you it's it, it's real it happened I've been on the highway multiple times and rendered aid in a couple cases of people that died in a couple cases of folks that didn't I saw a Corvette explode and flip racing somebody when I was a teenager and we pulled over and helped him and I was blood spraying and arms chopped off and everything else. And when you see something like that, it's, it's like it's not real. Corvette and other cars zoom past you, turn, a tire blows out, flies over, explodes over the medium, spinning in the air, blowing into pieces, bodies flying out. Other car slams in, rolls. Three teenagers in the Corvette, one sitting in the console and it's that we don't expect things like this to really happen we cannot believe it and so oh, that guy's crazy you know he says that there's giant debris fields that took two plus years to get here that are now arriving up and down the entire west coast of north america with uranium and plutonium all over it but that's a fact that's that's mainline japanese news it's a fact they put cancer viruses in all the major vaccines that get tested. You could say it's an accident in production. No, it's not. They're doing it on purpose. It's a fact. And you could just look this up and get the CDC's own documents from the 70s. And they're scanned online where they admit over 100 million people contracted and died of exotic cancers that are now common from the polio vaccine. And, that they, and then they have a PBS special where the scientists that worked with SOC to develop it said, well, we decided there's too many people. And so, so what if it had SV40 and all these other viruses? I mean, that sounds completely insane. But it is insane. It's insane that the head of Saudi Arabian intelligence three months ago in Russia, in a conference, in front of the entire Russian general staff, said, we're going to launch our forces all along the southern border of Russia, Dagestan, Tajikistan, Chechnya, Russia proper, if you we're going to attack the Olympics, leading up to it and during it. Yeah, that was in August. I said three months ago. That's longer. Man, time flies. Four or five months ago. Wow, time flies. Saudis threaten Russia with Olympic terrorist attacks unless it abandons Syria support. And then there's the, the article in the newscast about it. Or Prince Bandar, Sultan Bandar, literally came face to face with the Russian staff and Putin and said, we're going to attack you. I mean, that is ballsy, ladies and gentlemen, to say the least. That's the only term to describe it. And the Russians said, okay, you roll missiles up against us in Ukraine, we're going to roll medium range nukes in. I mean, this is really happening.
And don't forget, on 888, the start of the last Olympics, they always play these games. Because it's all about the international stage and what happens at the meetings behind the scenes when world leaders are together. That they launched out attack on Russian-held areas, Ossetia, South Ossetia, Abkhazia. And our media said Russia had attacked Georgia. And then when I came out and pointed that out, they had neocon CIA-known operatives come out and say, I was a Russian agent. Because I said, let's not attack Russia and have a nuclear war. And then the Russians actually rolled missile systems in, mobile missile systems, and said we're preparing to nuke NATO forces massing at the airports. Because the U.S. was going to, with, with NATO, back up the Georgians in some weird war with the Russians. And the Russians said, we're not going to have a Vietnam border war with you, a conventional war. You call a police action. We're going to have a nuclear war. And they said, you've got two hours. This is on television. Their chairman, joined, their chairman said, we're gonna, we've been authorized to begin uh, uh, using um, intermediate tactical nuclear weapons on your forces. And the United States and NATO pulled back, and the Russians pulled out back to their border. And now our crazy banker-run government's bringing missiles in. They've got al-Qaeda attacking the Russians. And the Russians don't want nuclear war so they're sitting back and taking it. But, I mean, the, the trend in 2014 is war. You've got a global Ponzi scheme coming down. The globalists want to take down the world into the, this new cashless SDR system where they get $100 trillion per decade in carbon taxes and buy-the-mile taxes and uh, Obamacare foreign corporate taxes. They, Davo said this four years ago. They said through... National health care transfers through carbon taxes, through national VATs and sales taxes paid into this new consortium of the IMF, World Bank, OECD, Federal Reserve, Bank of England. We will get 100 trill a year on the people of the West. And they couldn't get Congress to pass that, so Obama did it with an executive order this year. And by the way, that's being tagged on now to your power prices, gasoline, you name it. Not even an executive order. He just put it in a microwave regulation that they would start carbon taxing. But it, you don't see it on the bill. It's just, I mean, we're living in cuckoo land, folks. We're in a dictatorship. I think that's the fact. 2014 is going to see an accelerated awakening. But we're going to be in the weird position of armed paramilitary illegitimate governments robbing and stealing everything. We're going to know they're doing it. We're going to see the depression getting worse. It will probably implode. They'll call it an emergency like 2008, but it'll be much bigger and global. And they'll have bigger bail-ins of our private bank accounts, as they're now announcing in Europe and the U.S., where the private banks will actually take money out of your bank account. And the yuppies will all go along with it because the stock market will, you know, plunge by 10,000 points, something like that. It'll, it'll probably go up to 20, and then it'll drop down to 10,000. And then everybody will freak out, and they'll say, well, they've got to take 20% out of our bank account. Uh, to, to, to back up these other bad loans and derivatives. But don't worry, the market will go back up and the yuppies will allow 20%. I'm guessing that'll be the number watching them other countries. And then they'll go, actually, it's 40. But we're not going to say who, and, and then they'll never say exactly what the amount is. So it'll individually happen to you and the media won't talk to you. It'll be like a tree fell in the forest. Nobody heard the sound. They'll just take the money out of your account. Now, we could be like Iceland and find out that 90 plus percent of the debt is not ours. It's a fraud and arrest the finance ministers. But that took the Icelanders a year of demonstrating and not complying and not paying parking tickets and getting in police face and bureaucrats face and, and running into banks and pulling their money out. And the British then said, we're going to arrest any Icelanders <clears throat> basically coming to England because uh, England basically was running Iceland, uh, and you're a terrorist. Uh, we're going to treat all Icelanders' money as terrorist money and just take it if you try to get it out of the country. And the Icelanders started suing them and arresting people, and, and the British government had to back off. You can type in, London Guardian, headlines, you name it. Uh, England or UK uses anti-terror laws on Iceland depositors is, is one of the headlines. And they just said, no, I'm not a terrorist. I'm good. You're bad. You're arrested. How dare you say I'm a terrorist? And so the trend is the enemy's going to come in like a flood, folks. The, the walls are down. The shields are down. The enemy's flooding in. And even the dumbest people now know we're under attack. And you're meant to know about the attack now. 
and you're meant to just roll over and you're meant to go into the crisis and just get into a catatonic state where I'll just do what I'm told. They think you're done. They think you're going to roll over. They want to bankrupt you once and for all. There it is. UK used anti-terror laws to seize Icelandic bank assets of depositors. Bloomberg. No, the terrorist was Alistair Darling doing that of the Bank of England. And so you, you want to know the trends? It's, it's, it's they're going to try to start a war with Russia. The globalists are deep with the communist Chinese. I don't know if it's a double, triple, quadruple cross, but they're definitely gearing up for some type of conflict or proxy war with China. And the Chinese president's come out and ordered the PLA to prepare for war. Major changes in Beijing national security situation. That article uh, is at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Breaking exclusive. Because uh, Paul's wife reads uh, Chinese. She's Chinese. Great lady, Ehan. E By the way, I'm not even supposed to say her name, you know. They got a little government contact, uh, even though she's a British citizen. Uh, whenever uh, she has family in China, she was told shut up when she started writing articles for us. Just translating Chinese news. I mean, that's, that's what it's like to live in a country like that, where they even reach outside the nation. My grandfather worked uh, in high school and college with a major inventor who was German in Dallas, because my grandfather was what you'd call affluent. Uh, his dad was. And uh, they watched that guy lose everything he had. He had uh, air conditioning and refrigeration patents. And they watched in the buildup before World War II, Hitler threatening, and they didn't know this till later, to kill his family in Germany if that guy didn't give him what would be hundreds of millions of dollars today. Isn't tyranny great? Don't you love being slaves? We'll be right back. Stay with us. Will we... Uh, Punish the incredibly out-of-control criminals that have hijacked the federal government? Will we go after Obama for Benghazi Gate, Obamacare? Will we go after the Republican leadership and get rid of all of these blue-blood globalists like Boehner and all the rest of them? He's not a blue-blood himself. He's another middle-class, working-class sellout to tyranny. Another narcissistic you know, guy that just parties all day long, just like Obama. That's why the two get along together. And I, it wouldn't be bad if they like to go out and party if they weren't such scumbags. I mean, you guys are gutting this country for a bunch of crooks. You're their front men. And then you all organize. This is the year with the full-out assault of Mordor against Minas Tirith, if you want to use that analogy, the white city. And if they're able to bring it down, they win. Because if they can fully get America behind the world government and behind doing all of this and go from being a bad actor to being pure evil, they can do anything. I mean, if they can double, triple, quadruple your prices and have it be a foreign tax to big banks that own insurance companies, they can do anything. That's how tyranny works. So there is a big awakening happening, but those that aren't waking up are getting more narcissistic, more mentally ill, mental illness, breakups. Uh, delusion is getting worse everywhere. All the numbers show it. I, and I talk to people that are in management and companies across the board. The, the People are either waking up or they are becoming totally obsessed with television. And uh, how men are all idiots and, 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 and their girlfriends treat them bad. And, and that's why the girl gets the good looking guy. And all that does is make people break up. Uh, and the family under assault and children being taught. Uh, you know, how to have sex with each other. Pedophilia is being mainlined in 2014. It is just incredible, all the trends. You're going to see another push to bring down Syria for Al-Qaeda. I think you will see more false flags, mass shootings that are staged, more Boston bombing type situations. I think they're going to try that again to divert away from impeachment. I think you will see a move towards impeachment of Obama. I think you will see the Tea Party, even though there's election fraud and the whole political system against them. The real Tea Party, not the counterfeit. That's how they come at you. Uh, I, I think they will get more than 20 seats in the House. Worldwide, 2014, it's the same agenda worldwide. Uh, you, you, uh, you see uh, Germany and others being told that they're going to have to accept unlimited foreigners into their country who all get free welfare to, to further bankrupt the nation. Uh, you're going to see a big push for that here, obviously. Here's the Financial Times of London, U.S. Public Finance, Day of Reckoning. I predict that in 2014, you will see 
more than 500 cities and towns go bankrupt. By the way, that's a very conservative number. And I think more than 20 of those will be major cities. This has all been designed. Uh, you will see Chicago technically go completely bankrupt, but they won't call it that. They'll, they'll call it restructuring. Uh, you're going to see the population go from 49 million on food stamps to about 80 million in food stamps in the next three years if they have their way. Uh, you're going to see the robot take over. You're going to see driverless cars on every state highway. You're going to see uh, more layoffs at industry everywhere and people being replaced with robots, even though they're not performing as well. It doesn't matter. The globalists call that R&D. They want to replace us to make us obsolete as the ultimate tool of political control. You're going to see superbugs spread and kill millions, but the media will quietly blame it on the flu. I've confirmed with hospitals across the state uh, that they have, and it's all over the country, but East Texas, almost every hospital is at overflow, turning people away with mass death happening. Uh, and it's being kept very, very quiet because the government doesn't want it out. When it does come out, they say it's the flu. It is not the flu. It is drug-resistant staff uh, and drug-resistant uh, uh, other bacteria strains. Um, associated, again, that's in Reuters, uh, with the deadly antibiotics they're giving chickens now and uh, other animals that are kept in, in, in hellish conditions. And again, you're like, oh, so what about the chicken? The point is they're in these hell conditions covered with mites and, and their beaks cut off so they don't kill themselves because they're in such hell and they're and they're in cages the sides of their body being force fed and and they're and 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 you know, the, the, their legs break because they're so fat you are eating all those antibiotics and the chemicals and the stress hormones and so you basically are taking on the the concentrate the, the, the food boarded the reverse of a concentration camp the pesticide-filled, super antibiotic-filled chickens and turkeys particularly, those are the really bad ones. Uh, you are taking all that on, so you're now a Petri dish to create superbugs. So I predict you're going to see superbug outbreaks that dwarf this year. I'm going to tell you more what I think is coming next year. Stay with me. That, that convention's coming to Austin. NPR's reporting on that with PBS. That's what the Rockefellers want to sponsor and want men to do. And the creator of HBO's Entourage, Duck Dynasty, would be better off if gay people got to shoot at Phil Robertson. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that, that's amazing, amazing tolerance right there, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? <sighs> Last night, I, I was up here working, and I, I remember that case, that uh, state judge who was... Uh, spanking his 16-year-old daughter because she'd stolen something. And she was fighting him and not taking the spanking. So he was yelling and screaming at her, dominating her. And, I mean, quite frankly, <clears throat> if they caught us fighting in the field house when I was like 14, that's what they do to us. And they take us in there with big wooden paddles and spank us, and then they could keep control of the situation. They'd scream at us. Nowadays, you do that, the coach would be arrested. Instead, you go out and you act out of control and the cops taser you and your head hits the concrete and you die or you go to prison and get raped or stabbed. See, you will end up getting brought into line, but but they're going to try to ban spanking. They already try to do it by fiat. I was watching the show going, it was so horrible and she videotaped him spanking her. And the reason he's yelling at her is she won't bend over and get spanked. And the dad's freaking out because his daughter's been caught stealing and he is freaking out. And it's like, yeah, he'd never spanked me until then. And it was horrible. And that's, that's what it was, is that, and then the wife divorces him. I forget the name. I videotaped some of it on my iPhone. It was on MSNBC. And, and, and they were all acting like, it was like, oh my gosh, it's so horrible that he's yelling at her. And that's what happens. You don't spank somebody when they're five years old, lightly, when they steal something. Then it won't matter when they're 16 if you beat them. You, you, you didn't do it early enough. And, and that's what's happened to our society. And by the way, I haven't really even had to use corporal punishment with my children. I mean, it's, it's, you, know, you can use reward and, and all the rest of it. But they will try to dominate you at one point. And, you know, if your kid tries to walk out in the street the third time when they're three years old and won't listen, you've got to spank them and make them get upset. Understand, hey, I'm spanking you because if you walk out 
into a street, the car will run over you and kill you. It will spank you. And so there's a big push. That is to get rid of parents being the parents. And then the state will spank you with serotonin reuptake, reuptake inhibitors. The state will spank you with amphetamines to burn your brain out that cause heart palpitations, heart expansion, uh, heart conditions, brain shrinkage, retardation of growth, retardation of IQ. But that's okay. It's okay to put people on hardcore drugs that actually hurt them. <clears throat> By the way, I've told this story many times. I saw it speaking of PBS years ago. And then later I saw something similar when I was deer hunting. A fawn came out. It was an older fawn, didn't have spots anymore, baby deer, out into the field. And the mother ran out and nudged it and was trying to push it back. She smelled danger, obviously, smelled me in there with a gun. And it ran back out. And she turned around and kicked, but kind of missed, and the deer came back out. So I saw the deer bite, bite it. And by the way, mammals spank down lower, so you don't want to hurt the eyes. It's an instrument. I mean, monkeys do it. Apes do it. Dogs do it. Pup, you know, puppies with wolves are, are running out of the den, and they think there's a predator out there. You know, mama wolf will, you know, grab them and growl at them and snap at them. Not because she wants to hurt them. She, they, they're not listening. They have to learn through operative conditioning, Pavlovian conditioning, that you get shocked. You get bad stimulus when you do that. You didn't listen to reason, but, but the video I saw, which I've never seen again, but probably because they don't want people thinking about it. Did you guys ever find me that icebreaker story? Ne next. Come, come show it to me, because I'm... Yeah, what I want is a, a Kit Daniels did one on this. I, I want the CNN one because it was funny how they reported on it. It's CNN and it's uh, icebreak, uh, uh, icebreaker ship stuck trying to wrestle people. I, I want to mention that. Thanks. Anyways, I'm getting back into the trends, the news, and your phone calls. And I was watching the documentary about killer whales coming up to the Arctic ice and eating fur seals. And the seals need to go in and out of the water, and they have breathing holes. But killer whales will sit there waiting. They can hold their breath for, you know, 30 minutes or whatever. They're sitting there waiting for them. And the mother will come over, smell, has a bad instinct, you know, picks up, there's something down there, says, no, we're not going in. And the babies keep hopping over towards the edge of it. And the first seal barks at it and hits it with its flippers. And then did the exact same thing, walked right over what I saw that deer do and bit and you could see on the film that there was a bloody spot now was it better for the seal to bite the baby to not get killed and eaten by a killer whale and the establishment doesn't want you having your own kids they want your kids out of control so they're totally screwed up have no values and the state can take them over and then discipline them th uh, themselves they want screwed up people and that's the same thing You know, old fairy tales, they would tell kids, if you're bad, you know, a goblin will come and take you away at night. So don't go outside of the house at night or the boogeyman will get you. Well, the boogeyman was the fact in every ancient culture and still today, there were crazy people and bad people that would go out at night and find people to rape and kill. And so you didn't want to explain that to your kids. So you'd show them a picture of Krampus. If you're bad, St. Nicholas won't come and give you toys. Krampus will come and take you to hell, and that's why you, you, you'll, you'll wake up in your bed with coal because that's where you went in the night. So they just combined it with Santa. And let me tell you something. I, I, you know, I told my wife this early on, and she didn't want to do it, and, and I, I respect her wishes, but you tell your kids, that's what fairy tales, what they came up with. It's archetypes of, of bad stuff happening. Hey, you don't do what I say. A Freddy Krueger-like person is going to come and get you. And that's very effective because you know what? If you don't do what your parents say and if you don't learn how things work, and if you don't learn the knowledge they know, even if they're not perfect, they do know more than you because they have life experience. There are stuff far worse than Freddy Krueger, the fantasy character out there. And that's all I'm trying to get to is this is 2014, the make it or break it time. And there's a lot of other trends. I'm going to try to...
do a focus trends analysis tonight that we can air uh, tomorrow or perhaps uh, on the nightly news. But war, big midterm elections, critical year. Uh, we're going to see a continued martial law buildup. And I think the biggest thing you're going to see is the continued acceleration of the global depression in a siege system to consolidate globalist power and then to collectivize the entire globe uh, with the globalist, again, offshore above the law, exempt from all the taxes they create to transfer our wealth to them, which they're also exempt from. So the economic global warfare will intensify. Uh, and the big news of 2012 is there is a global awakening happening, but the globalists don't care. They're moving forward with Obamacare, with more false flags, with the Boston bombing. The good news is the Syria war fell apart. Uh, their system's melting down, but you will see more people who've believed in the system and keep believing if they follow the fads, they're going to be fulfilled, uh, have mental breakdowns. Because this year, I saw so many people I know literally believe they're going to become movie stars, literally believe they're going to become dancing stars, literally believe they're going to become rock and roll stars and music stars. Austin is like the new Los Angeles where half the people I know are like, no, I'm going to be a movie star. I'm going to be a, a music star. And it's going to happen any minute. And I know how rigged the whole thing is and how it's designed to make you think you become successful because you're going to be a basketball star. You're going to be a football star. You're going to be a movie star. And only a fraction of people that become a, quote, TV star or movie star even make the big money. And then that's a prison itself. Only a fraction of the best basketball players even get in the NBA. It's like, that will be one out of 10 million. Only a fra it's just, it's total delusions. And I've seen this over the years, learning psychology, just living. <clears throat> that most talk show hosts I ran into, most liberty people didn't like authority and, and, and cared about freedom to a certain extent. But really, they thought this was their chance to be big stars. And if they didn't become successful right away, and if there was work in fighting tyranny, or if there was any pressure fighting tyranny, they just fall away or they start infighting. And again, folks, do you think somebody tuning into a radio show that's talking about this talk show, this, that, that talk show, that infighting, do you think people tune into that or out of it? They tune out because they don't know what they're talking about. They don't care. People care about themselves and what's happening right now. They're looking for answers. They're not looking for Cass Sunstein's infighting. So the feds will accelerate their attack on the alternative media and on the real media and Internet censorship will intensify. And as they said uh, four years ago in the White House documents that are public by the uh, White House regulations are, Cass Sunstein, they're going to fund FBI operatives. That's the main group that does it to pose as online talk show hosts. They'll even be given platforms to create constant infighting, Hal Turner style, <clears throat> to claim everyone is a Fed but themselves and to create hoaxes in the media in hopes that other media picks up on the hoaxes so they can be discredited. And you're going to see just massive intensification of that uh, in uh, 2014. I want to go to your phone calls. It's just that I'm sitting here brainstorming, thinking about what I really think is going to happen in 2014. Even though they failed and midterm elections are coming up, they're not going to give up. Uh, they might, if they stage another false flag, and, and, and I really think that Sandy Hook has the earmarks. We don't know exactly what happened, but we know there was a stand down. Uh, the Aurora shooting is absolutely mind control, 100%, no debate. Signs still delivered, so is the Boston bombing. We've already hashed over all that. <clears throat> they could go with a nuke of a major city or a bioweapon release, uh, or they could shoot up a mall and kill 200 people. Have a team go in. Lock down them all systematically with a, it'll be a foreign mercenary team. It's just hard to get people that will actually do that because they know whoever does that is going to be killed later. But they do have some teams that, that, that they may be able to get teams that will do it. And then they'll have guys tied up in a storage room, three patriots, three gun owners, uh, guys they've set up, guys that uh, they thought were joining a militia. It'll be guys that think, that this is just how they work. I'm not saying this will happen. But this is a scenario. It, it'll be guys that think they're joining a militia. It'll be three vets, four vets, and uh, they'll think they're going to meetings and for militia training in case America collapses to maintain order. These guys will be people that don't have a lot of family, so they can grab them, drug them up for a few weeks to get them electroshocked and drugs so they don't even know who they are. Just so they're confused and can't defend themselves, they'll be kept 
after the brainwashing in a coma state until the day of the event. And then at midnight, they'll roll into the storage area at a front company in a mall or a business area they control. It'll be about a five to ten man team that does it. This is how they operate. They'll have the guys drugged up, the patsies they're going to drug, and, and who they've drugged and who they're going to blame. And then they'll go lock things down. They'll even have a drill in case they get caught to tell the cops it's part of a drill. And if the cops get wise, they'll just kill those cops and run the operation early. And then they'll shoot a couple hundred people. They, need, they want a big number. And then it'll all be coincided with the guys wearing off from the drugs. And then they'll have inside people inside the department they choose who will go in and shoot up and wound the guys that are drugged up. So that'll be the cover in the hospital for why these guys can't talk. And then in a couple days, they'll come out of the drugs not knowing who they are. That's how they run operations. And that's how they did the Boston bombing. I mean, those guys weren't drugged up. They were CIA guys that they thought were going to actually get to work for the agency who were sent in as playboy wannabe idiots uh, to uh, infiltrate and promote al-Qaeda groups in Chechnya. That was confirmed. We know the State Department group that funded it. The younger brother was just a tag follower with his arrogant, narcissistic brother. Uh, and, I mean, we, I mean, we know that. And then they were part of the drill part of the simulation drill and then were told to go stand down. Then they figured out they were going to be set up when they saw their pictures on the news because they got wise enough to figure out what was happening. And that's why they had to kill both of them, but one of them still lived. So they had to do the tracheotomy to shut him up, but he's now pled not guilty. So that causes him a problem. Before they death threatened the family, the family spoke out and said, indeed, they were set up. And they had a whole other network of Chechen anti-Islamists who wanted money and be playboys, uh, just like uh, other groups that they... Um, Programmed. I'm sorry, I've kind of gone off the deep end today into a bunch of different areas, but that's the type of stuff that they're going to do in the new year. Uh, so, oh, a new, a new bombing. So, Saudi Arabia uh, is definitely going ahead with ruining the Olympics for Russia, which will cause them tens of billions of dollars. Novostat reports one person was killed and two injured in a roadside bombing in Russia's North Caucasus Republic of Dagestan. Late Monday, a police spokesman said an improvised explosive device went off as traffic police car was driving by. Two officers in the car were injured and a passerby was killed, the spokesman said. An Islamist insurgency once confirmed largely to Chechnya has spread across North Caucasus in recent years with attacks on security forces, police and civilians reportedly almost daily in nearby republics of Dagestan. And again, that's where they're having the Olympics. And uh, that's uh, very close to uh, the area in Russia where they just had all the attacks. So it's on, folks. It's on. Uh, here's what I wanted to report to you. Chinese icebreaker turns back from Antarctic rescue mission, one of the biggest and most powerful icebreakers known of modern design. Chinese ship trying to reach a trapped expedition vessel in Antarctica has turned back. So both the North and South Pole are just massive. The icebreaker, the Zulong, or Snow Dragon, has just six nautical miles away from the Russian flag vessel when the captain decided the ship did not get any closer. And there's another icebreaker I've got that's actually stuck as well trying to get to them. Uh, and so now they're going to try to use an airlift to evacuate them from the stranded, frozen uh, Antarctic ship. So the North and South Poles are record sizes, but well, it was all going to be melted, according to Al Gore. I mean, your voice is out there. Your support of liberty, your support of independent free speech is so essential. They're going to try to pass hate laws that ban speech that is, quote, offensive or hurtful to any group. Well, you can find people out there that are offended by anything. And that's why you see the media putting this image out. But you'll see the power of the kleptocratic media wane. But with their target captured, kept audience, you'll see them get even more delusional. I mean, you can tell when somebody's a big TV head. I've got so many friends that uh, end up you know, who have great marriages. Uh, the, their marriages end as soon as their wife starts becoming a big television head. Uh, because you watch it, it's scientific programming. Every word they say on sitcoms, dramas, uh, soap operas, movies is meant to shred the family, is meant to put men down. 
than is meant to have women just be total narcissistic, arrogant, uh, self-serving creatures that care about nothing but their own, you know, personal uh, power and being glamorous. That's the new feminism is, 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 is just being a tyrant and dominating your man, not, not working with them. Uh, and it's just spreading everywhere. And again, men are buying into the image of, of men just being childlike, moron, pleasure seekers uh, who just sit around gibbering mindlessly all day. So you're seeing the effects of that uh, in 2013 and a 20, 2014. But you'll see uh, CNN, MSNBC continue to race bait, uh, continue to push balkanization. Uh, you're just going to see the establishment throw total fits in what they're doing because they can't stop stealing and they can't stop their instinct to want to eradicate good. It's not just they want to dominate. They don't like goodness. They've turned themselves over to it. They're animated by it. And so you're going to just see madness. You're going to see mass mental illness and a pouring out of a spirit of evil in 2014. But you know what the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. So these are historic times, and I don't want to hear from anybody that you're bored. I don't want to hear from anybody uh, that, you know, oh my gosh, life's so meaningless. It's meaningless if you only care about substance of, you know, garbage of, of trappings of success. The fake substance, the fake material. You've got to care about the real essence of freedom, the engine of all that's good, minus the fake substance of materialism. Now, again, they don't want you to have enough materialism so they can dangle it in front of you and control you. I want people to materially be satisfied. You want that. Because then they can't be as easily controlled. The problem is, is that in this narcissistic, decadent, total materialistic society, where that's worshipped, there's never enough. And that's where all the control freak manifestations come from. As the people that have all the power are totally unhappy. So if they could just dominate the world, they might be happy. Or if they could just have the life extension technologies, but they can't let the general public have it, you know, they would be happy. On and on and on. I'm going to do a little bit of overdrive because folks have been holding patiently. Nick in Pennsylvania. And then um, Ryan and James and Nathan and, and Rod, I'll try to get to all of you and, and, and to make your points. We didn't have any guests today, and I tend to run on at the mouth sometimes when I don't have guests. It's kind of a intermission or rest from my ranting. Uh, but I hope that this has uh, spurred people to think about where we've been in 2013, where we're going in 2014. And I'm not trying to give you gloom and doom. We're in this situation. It's the best of times, worst of times. But if we're honest about where we are as a civilization and as a society and admit that we're in peril, we can get out of it. It's like that icebreaker up there with the melted, or down there in the melted Arctic, Antarctic. You know, down there in the global warming. I mean, it's stuck in the ice. They have to admit they're stuck in the ice. They have to admit that man bear pig is completely full of baloney. 2013 was the year the world began to wake up to the fact that all was not as it seemed. That we were living in a facade, a matrix-like fraud. 2014 will be the year people wake up to the fact that the facade hides a military-designed mind control program to literally destroy humanity as we know it. The question is, will the general population have the will to admit that that's indeed happening? 2014 is so critical. Let's talk to Nick in Pennsylvania. Thanks for calling. Go ahead. Alex, how you doing, my friend? Pretty good, brother. Thanks for calling. Uh, you're welcome. Um, one thing I wanted to say is evil wins when good when good does nothing. We got to fight this stuff. We have to. Yeah, but I mean, I like to watch football. That's where I see fighting. I I'm concerned about that. I don't care if they're taking kids for no reason and putting them on seven, eight drugs and killing them. I mean, so what if they're doing pesticide tests on little black kids in New York? I mean, it's racist if you don't want to kill the black kids. Let me tell you something, Alex. My country means more to me than a football game. The people have got to get their heads out of the sand. I mean, you, I, I watched your uh, video, uh, your uh, um, DVD Endgame. Let me tell you something. It's fantastic. I watched it over and over again, and you're right. This is being done through incrementalism. You notice I made I that mean, film almost eight years ago, and if you look at it, I say in the near future at the start of the film, and now most of it's happened. 
Absolutely it has happened, and, that's, and you were right. You hit the nail right on the head. This is being done through incrementalism. It's getting people to think, oh, it's okay to spy on you. We're being protected. No, it's not okay. The government does not have a right to put us under a microscope and look at us like a disease. We have the right to freedom and privacy in this country, and it makes me sick, Alex. I'm tired of this. You said it beautifully, brother. God bless you. What do you think is coming up in... Uh 2014. Well, you know what? In 2014, Alex, this is what I'm praying for. The good people have got to come together. I intend on being by your side 100% and, pr and prayfully vice versa. I'm hoping to be on your show more often. I'm hoping to tell you what's going on here in Philly. It's a disgrace. I see U.S. military aircraft flying around the city of Philadelphia 24-7. There's frequency weapons. That, that are out there. Incidentally, how's your uncle doing? Uh, he's, by the grace of God, he's still not cognitively there, and, and but he's getting better and, and getting more responsive, and uh, they're doing brain scans and stuff today, but he, he didn't die, and that's a big blessing. Well, I want to let you know, I am praying for your uncle every single day, and, you know, like I said, I hope they do that, fu that fungus test because I've been doing research, and there's a, a fungus called... Aspergillus, A-S-P-E-R-G-I-L-L-I-S, that attacks the lungs. It can also attack the lining of your brain that causes meningitis. And, you know, it, it's, I'm not saying that's what it is, but there is a possibility. They need to, fun they need to do more focus. No, I hear you. I hear you, brother. I'm going to jump, uh, jump. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to go to break. I'm going to continue doing some overdrive. This 12-minute segment coming up so I can get to everybody. Um, breaking down the major trends of 2013. I appreciate everybody holding. Let's just get Ryan's call started. Ryan, what'd you call in about? Hi there, Alex. Do you hear me? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I was just calling about um, something that I didn't hear anybody touch on yet. Uh, was actually the false flag nuclear attack down there in uh, South Carolina. Yeah, that is the year they fired a bunch of nuke generals right after we were told by our high-level source that they... Transferred secret nukes uh, out of uh, Dias Air Force Base, East, uh, West Texas, yes. That's what I was calling about, yeah. I kind of followed up on that and found out there was a 4.5 earthquake off the coast, about 620 miles, um, supposedly detonated underwater. So, yeah, that was pretty key. I wanted to touch on that. and uh, maybe Well, Lindsey Graham, hours after we reported it, gave a speech, and the Associated Press carried it, saying that they were looking at that harbor being nuked. And then an earthquake happens, and some have said it was a nuke. I, I don't know. I appreciate your call. We're going to go to Rod, James, Nathan, and others straight ahead on the other side of this ship. All right, we're in overdrive. Nightly news will be original, live tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Or taped to air, streamed. I'm not sure how they're doing it tonight. 7 o'clock Central, PrisonPlanet.tv. I'm going to go right back to your calls, but let me just show you a few of the headlines. If you're a TV viewer, you can see this uh, at PrisonPlanet.tv. Russia wishes NATO a happy new year. It's also up on InfoWars.com. As only Russia can. Russian Deputy Prime Minister has sent NATO a rather unusual New Year's card, picturing Santa alongside a Russian intercontinental ballistic missile. Video. And this is up on InfoWars.com from London Independent. Sun has flipped upside down as new magnetic cycle begins. I wonder if the bureaucrats can have a U.N. vote. They said the sun doesn't affect climate. How about they have a vote and just say the Arctic's melted and Antarctic, like Al Gore said it would do by this year. doesn't matter. It's at uh, record levels. The sun has flipped upside down and its north to south poles reversed to reach the midpoint of the solar cycle, 24, NASA has said. 18 dead in Iraq attacks, including Army General. Again, this is they wanted to destabilize Iraq. That was the policy, just like they wanted to destroy any other sovereign nation. The U.S. dollar is dumping again. That's out of zero hedge. For the second time in a week, the market is running, not walking away from USD. Despite all the equity market exuberance over the taper, the USD uh, is now unchanged from the FOMC decision and its relative free fall on the world's reserve currency on a scale we saw during last Friday's craziness. Treasuries are modestly uh, bid this morning. Equities are flat and precious metals are lower, though gold is recovering as USD sinks. 
Florida neighborhood bans kids from playing in the street. But then if your kid gets overweight, the CPS will take them. So that's just some of the news I've got on that front. Uh, here's a New American article that hits the nail on the head. Establishment terrified, both Republican and Democrat. Tea Party won't back unnecessary wars. And it breaks down how the whole system's coming after them and how 2014 is so key for getting good Tea Party uh, people into office. I mentioned this yesterday, but I need to mention it again and then go to your calls. The latest revelations are that when any public figure, anybody, wants to buy a computer via the mail or an iPhone via the mail or whatever, that the NSA has a whole assembly line system with Apple, with Microsoft, with all of them, with the Postal Service, with UPS, with FedEx, to where your package is intercepted, routed to them, and then without warrants, they put the malware and spyware on it. And then, and then the FBI you know, releases a worldwide malware to, quote, catch one guy. So when he logged onto any computer in the world, they could catch him. D does anyone believe that? We've always told you the viruses are being created by the globalists. They created Stuxnet three years ago, and I predicted they would say, we've got to take Internet freedom because of Stuxnet. Even after it was admitted the U.S. and Israel made it, we had to give up our rights because they made a virus. <sighs> we have to give up our rights because they're helping Al-Qaeda. I mean, bull, man. Enough is enough. And all you new listeners out there that laugh at this stuff, I know you're not laughing too much now. We're going to lose everything if we don't get upset. I mean, Drudge linked to my article or our article uh, yesterday. It's actually an RT article we posted where now the police are just having real checkpoints taking DNA without warrants. First, it was federal funding where they asked voluntarily and intimidated you. Now they're just saying, give it to me. <laughs> just incredible. Here's another article. Target's close relationship to government needs to be watched. Target's forensic services is who the FBI, Secret Service, BATF, and others have turned to for help for two decades. Yeah. And the FBI crime lab, folks, is the most corrupt in the world. Uh, it was a Dr. Frederick Whitehurst. We've interviewed him, went public to head of the crime lab about the total fraud where they were framing almost everybody. And all the other major police labs get caught framing. I mean, let me tell you, the system, you cannot believe a police officer when they testify or an FBI agent. And I'm not saying individually they, they may be a crook. I'm not saying individually, I think they're all crooks. I'm saying for on the top, they are a known criminal group. Any big police department, any, I mean, every major police department in Texas has had frame-ups in their, in their labs. Or they use groups that engage in frame-ups. Target is a social engineering group. If you go research them, it's another globalist front, like Microsoft, Apple, all of them. The big boxes are meant to destroy the economy. Just, just understand that. Walmart, all of it. So that's just some of the news. Let's uh, go to, here's one more from J.D. Hayes at naturalnews.com up on infowars.com. And this happened a few months ago, but now it's back in the news. The person had a glitter poster and the police said, well, we saw some of it falling. We think you tried to hoax people as a bioweapon. We're arresting you and charging you with it. Environmental activists, like all activists, can sometimes be overly disruptive and a little bit kooky in what they choose to protest. But the only thing that generally are not are terrorists, but apparently some political departments and federal law enforcement officials uh, would beg to differ. Indeed, according to Mother Jones Magazine, many activists have been subjected to arrest in the past, but never for being enemies of the state until now. It's not uncommon for environmental protesters to face arrest, but here's the first apparent December 13th, Oklahoma City police charged a pair of environmental activists with staging a terrorism hoax when they unfurled a pair of banners covered with glitter a substance local cops considered evidence of a fake biological assault. Though they didn't say bioattack, bioattack. They just saw some glitter. It's like saying you assaulted an officer with detergent because you blew bubbles at them that didn't even touch them. This is the mental illness, folks. And again, this is the big article. A Chicago pension crisis called Worst in the Nation. There's no amount of taxes are going to fix it. It was designed to do this. Okay, let's go to your calls. Just wanted to hit some more of that news. And then we're going to play this rabble rouser clip we have queued up. Uh, let's go to James in Kentucky. James, you're on the air. Hello, sir. <laughs> I, I have something of great importance I'd like to share with you that I discovered uh, the other day. Um, I discovered uh, how to reclaim your sovereign citizenship. 
And there's a link I would like to recommend. Well, hold on. Uh, and, 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 I mean, have you gone out and then the establishment then let you on airplanes without IDs and suddenly you didn't have to pay taxes and stuff? I mean, I mean, did you discover it or has it worked? Well, no, we've always had sovereign rights. I no, mean, no, I know we have them, but they've taken them by force de jour and, 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 and they're just dominating us through force of tyranny. I agree. They are, but... We, you know, if more people stand up in favor of this and understand what their rights really are, then this country, that would solve maybe all of our problems. And, I, and I'm really just kind of blown away by the fact you don't stand up for these things, you know, but I do hear. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. I don't stand up for these things. Uh, and, and, and then you want to plug a website. I don't mean that, sir. I don't mean you don't stand up for our rights. I, I mean, I don't hear you say anything about how to reclaim our sovereign rights. Well, I've had tons of guests on like Red Beckman and countless others over the years. The problem is most of the people with the straw man arguments and all the rest of it, I've been doing, I've been doing this 18 years, so I know all about it. I'm not frustrated with you. I'm not trying to belittle you. It's just that there is reality to it, but the reality is educating people about it so we stop complying and realize our rights. I'm saying there isn't some magic thing you do uh, that 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 then stops it all. There's no silver bullet. I'm always hearing about silver bullets. And so here's my deal, though. I don't usually screen calls. I wanted to know what people thought the top stories of 2013 are. So you're saying it's a sovereign movement. I think moving to the country, becoming a farmer, buying locally, uh, not complying with unconstitutional laws, getting out of the system, fighting stuff in court, learning the Constitution, Bill of Rights, suing corrupt officials, uh, teaching them that they're public servants. I mean, there's a lot of real stuff. I just don't promote sovereign citizen type stuff because it's minefields of people promoting stuff and saying stuff that gets people in trouble. I mean, it's like the IRS is totally illegal, run by the Federal Reserve, set up in 1913, a total scam. But if the average person gets out of it, they will grab your bank accounts and shut you down and come after you. Now, if we keep complying, they're going to put the whole cashless society in and jack it up to where it's impossible to survive to make us destitute. That's the plan. So we almost have to stop paying it just to survive. It's meant to destroy us. I'm just saying make your own decision and watch out. But if you're small time and aren't a big organization and are just taking care of your family, there's 60 million people not paying it. That's why they want the cashless society to come after you. So I say bravo to those people out there. But it's like the mafia. I'm saying you make the decision whether you're going to pay them or not because they might break your legs. Let's go ahead and talk to Rod in France. Go ahead, Rod. How you doing, Alex? Good, brother. Uh, all my best wish it wishes for a uh, for uh, a new year that we're nobody's too sure about. But uh, I don't know. We need to stick together and hope things go go better. I guess. Um, I wanted to make a comment earlier in the show when you were talking about uh, radio-controlled aircraft. Uh, going back to World War II, I wanted to let you know, since I'm from uh, Kettering, Ohio, originally living in France now, I uh, wanted to let you know that Charles Kettering, back in 19, 1917, was commissioned by the United States Army to make the first radio-controlled flying bomb, which was called the Kettering Bug, which I guess was the world's first drone. A little bit of trivia there for you. Yeah, but people think they couldn't remote control the jet aircraft on 9-11. Those were the first large passenger liners fitted with systems for remote control. Exactly. And, it, and it, I mean, for me, it's it's just common knowledge, but I guess it depends on, I don't know. No, 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 you get it. When you're informed, you're a conspiracy theorist, you're a rabble rouser. Let's skip this network break so I have time to go to people. I'm going to go to the bottom of the hour, then we've got a key work to get done, finishing the studio here with the great crew. But no, I know when you're informed, the uh, the dumbed down people have, have been taught that to laugh at you and that makes them better than you. They think because you're trying to inform them, you're showing off to them. That's how pathetic some of the general public are. And it, it, it's and it's irritating. It's irritating, and it gets your blood up. But you know, you just got to deal with it because you know you, you just have to realize that these people aren't informed, and, and they're spending their time probably watching soap operas or. Well, no, that's it. And I mean, here's the deal with the sheeple. You want to drink fluoride? You want to take vaccines? You want to eat GMO? You see the cancer rates uh, going up? People dying young? All the new diseases? Hey, knock yourselves out, morons! You want to eat a bunch of GMO chicken full of deadly? 
uh, you know, chemicals and, and uh, antibiotics. So superbugs, you know, kill you and your whole family and then, you know, kill my family. Well, th that's not more power to you. And it's just, look, it's all going to collapse. The globalists know the system's unsustainable, so they've made it even more unsustainable so they can control the collapse and, and gain power in a judo move out of the unsustainability of the system while they blocked all the new technologies and systems and made us unsustainable. We have... Go ahead. Exactly, and uh, the thing about it is, is I'm, well, you're an expert at this. Uh, you're going to get it all thrown back in your face. People are going to laugh at you or, or belittle you or do whatever it is that, they, that they're going to do. But, you know, you just have to do your best to try to, try to get them to understand. Oh, listen, uh, listen, I saw a clip, and I appreciate your call. i got to jump to get the others. Uh, finish your point. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I, anyway, for, for uh, 2013, real, real quickly, I wanted to say for me, uh, the, the biggest things that happened in 2013, the biggest thing was the blatant, open disregard for uh, rule of law at the same time as the, the police state grows with, with virtually totally, total uh, impunity. And, uh, you know, a lot of this, I think, you know, uh, open anti-constitutional lawmaking uh, by Obama uh, is just, incredible for me and and what i think is why why things ha any nothing has happened against this i i'm starting to believe uh, especially after the comments of mr benny on your show uh, the other day i think that the nsa has criminal maybe or, or immoral information on politicians and may be forcing them to do uh, what they say or be exposed or lose their job absolutely look we already know this, this in, in england and here Remember every couple of years you hear about like 5,000 Pentagon computers had child porn on them. And then they go in and say, this is on your computer. And you're like, I didn't put that there. They're like, well, do what we say. They're putting it there. They can go and create fake search histories. They can go in as if they're you, go wherever they want. They can fake DNA. They can fake fingerprints. They can fake biometrics. All of it. It's all on record. And, and that's what Target does. That's what, <laughs> and I mean, it's just so crazy. I appreciate your call. God bless you. It, it, it is just totally disgusting to uh, see all of this going on. It, it's just all fake. No, and, and that's it. They have created criminal divisions in all these governments and major corporations, and now they're busy getting rid of the old non-criminal divisions and converting to pure criminality. And uh, people need to understand who did all this. It's the people that work for the system, and they think it's funny. And they're, they're setting up a police state because that's a rear guard action to protect them in case we try to stop them. So the number one mission is to get the word out about who did it. So this is the year that the rule of law was openly urinated all over and killed. So, of course, there's an awakening. The question is, is it, ha is it happening fast enough? Nathan in California, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, how are you? Good, brother. What's on your mind? Uh, so real quick, I was hoping to pitch uh, one of your products real quick, just to let the whole world know that uh, super male vitality is the bee's knees. Turns you into a rock star. But uh, on top of that, I'd like to talk about how uh, the United States is shipping guns over to Syria to fight Al Qaeda when I was over in Iraq fighting to kill, like, just take out Al Qaeda. Like, it, it angers me the fact that now I'm considered a terrorist because of my views, yet they're still giving guns to the people who we were sent over to fight. You know, no, no, I totally agree with you, and, 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 but it's, it's the thing, of it's the insult that they openly are funding al-Qaeda and openly gave them the weapons at Benghazi and then let them kill the ambassador and, and the Navy SEAL people, uh, well, the sheep dip Navy SEALs, uh, CIA SEALs, show that they could cover the whole deal up, and, and it just shows how incredibly arrogant they are, and I'm just sick of it, and I know the veterans out there, now you're the new threat. And you just know they're going to false flag and blame it on vets. Uh, do you think vets are going to buy that? Do you think the military is going to buy taking over America to go after vets? Oh, uh, so, I mean, I've talked to a lot of my friends who are still in the military, and i got friends over in Iraq and Afghanistan right now, and they're sick of it. You know, we're getting sent over there to fight al-Qaeda, and yet we're, we're, we're fighting the people with our guns, and we're paying for it. But again, if you're mega banks playing both sides, you get money and power out of that. People go, why would America fund al-Qaeda and then they kill our troops? That's how you have a war. It's how you destabilize Iraq. It's how you destabilize Afghanistan. The goal is to screw stuff up. <laughs>
I mean, it's, it's and the globalists admit that. That's their program. God bless you, sir. Uh, sorry, one more point. Go ahead. Oh, and everyone wants to say, like, oh, well, Obama's doing such great things. Well, he's the one who's just extended the Afghan war for another 10 years. How many, how many more people need to go over there and get butchered? I was a corpsman, like a medic. But I've seen what happens over there. And these people are coming back maimed, killed, for, just so some other person can make a ton of money. And we need to, like, as a country, stand up and say enough is enough. Yes, and the only group, look, who are they demonizing? God bless you, and I appreciate you, sir. And even though the war was a fraud, your courage is still recognized. You believe you were fighting uh, for liberty and freedom, so you're not guilty, and you could still be honored. I want people to understand that. God judges the heart, folks, because the world is so sophisticated. And it's only in hindsight that we learn the truth and then now can say it was wrong. I mean, I was always against it. But Walter Jones, who was for it, has apologized to everyone and has tried to end it. And, and that's really the essence of being manly, is when you're wrong, admitting it, and then setting about to try to rectify it. I mean, if you've been involved in abortions, you don't want to admit it was wrong because you don't want to admit you're wrong. Deep down, you know it was a bad decision. And you didn't understand all of it at the time, but just admit you're wrong now and try to end the practice. Certainly end it for the third trimester. And I'm telling you, it, it's like uh, the Christmas story where you've got... Uh, the, you know, the bankers that have all the chains on them from all the evil they've done. And they tell uh, Scrooge that his chains are twice that size. And he better start working to get them off. I mean, that, that's real, folks. Spiritually, that's basically what it is. And I know the Bible, uh, people debate it back and forth. You know, faith, faith without works is dead. We are saved by, by faith and by grace. But if you're not really saved, then you won't recognize evil and not want to be part of it and you won't want to resist it and you won't have works i mean people out there these churches that just go and feel good all day and sit on their butts and do nothing while all this evil is going on and your church is really a 501c3 government institution you're not in a church and the church is really many of these establishment glitter bug churches are really Government spies sitting up there watching everything you're doing. And they're going to tell you, turn your guns in, take the inoculations, do what you're told when they drop the hammer. Just like in Red Dawn, when the Soviets take over with the Latin American invasion, it's very accurate the way it portrays. They go and they've got the mayor and the preachers working for them. And reporting to them who is involved and who they think will resist to then get them involved in the evil so now they're part of it. That's how corruption works, folks. And I'm telling you right now, better decide which side you're on. You better decide right now because I've never had more dread than I have now. And I am just lost in a wilderness of um, being overwhelmed. And I know you're overwhelmed too. So we just got to get our hearts right. And we just got to leave these big glitter bug churches or shake them up. Go in there and say, why aren't you talking about this? Why aren't you talking about that? of just a bunch of people that see the world falling apart who want to feel good and feel like they go one day a week to watch some glitter bug preacher on a big screen sit there and act like he's got the moral authority and he's the father and he's the leader. But then the wife sits there and, you know, and, and these women sit there and are the bosses of their husbands. I mean, I mean, these churches are evil, ladies and gentlemen. These churches now, because I, I watch them on television, I read their doctrines, I've been to them, and man, it is... Uh, it's all government run. Almost all these churches are government run now. And uh, these preachers know who they are. I've even run into Baptist preachers at funerals and stuff who are good people overall, but they come over and they try to tell me I'm wrong about stuff, but they have this look in their eyes like they're scared, they're upset, they're convicted just seeing me. I can see everything written in their face because they know. They know God knows they're a coward. And I'm telling you, the fact that you know that... I know what Christ is going to say at that white throne about you. He doesn't know you.